I'm just going to talk a lot more. Uh, I'm so pleased to be here. I'm Bob Silverman. I'm the president of the American Foreign Service Association. Thank you very much for coming. And this promises to be a very informative and interesting session. It's the eighth installment in our ongoing speaker series on federal benefits issues. So far, we've covered topics like Medicare, health insurance, long-term care, and even divorce. Now it's time for the really big one, Social Security. So we're very pleased to have with us Ed Zorndorf, who's a true expert on this topic. He owns and operates an accounting firm and financial services firm in Maryland, and he has written numerous publications for, among others, the Federal Employee News Digest, and he currently <coughs> moderates their Federal Soup Q&A forum. Ed's written for a number of other professional publications, and he frequently speaks on federal benefits and social security topics. Last year, for instance, Ed wrote such a great column on social security issues for married couples on the myfederalretirement.com website that we got permission to reprint it, and it was widely read by our uh, membership here at ASSA. So uh, we found Ed. And uh, we uh, asked him to come to speak to us today about a topic that's on all of our minds. If you're not already thinking about Social Security, you should be. <laughs> and, uh, and we look forward to helping with you afterwards. Uh, any other follow-up questions? We have with us, right, Janet, can you identify Janet Hedrick in the back of the room? She's our membership director. And uh, do we have Matt Sulrich here? He is our who works on retiree issues. So any follow-up questions on these issues, um, please uh, go to Janet. We'll have a business card. We'll have a business card out at the table. Wonderful. And I'll be one of the many people interested as a future retiree. So thank you, Ed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. A round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Show up. You know, you had the hard job getting us together. So I want to thank you and Matt, Matt and Bonnie for having you. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. How are we all doing? Great. Well, sit back and relax because over the next couple hours, whatever time it takes, I want to make sure I get all your questions answered about Social Security and I'm going to throw in a little Medicare too. Because, ladies and gentlemen, Social Security and Medicare are related in many ways. Let me give you an example. Suppose you start receiving a Social Security check as early as age 62. This is a retirement check again. When you turn 65, the Social Security Administration will automatically enroll you in Medicare. It's automatic. Now, if you're not receiving a Social Security check at age 65, then you have to formally enroll in Medicare. It's, 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 it's not going to be automatic. You have to actually get onto the Social Security website and enroll. If you are receiving a Social Security check, before 65, at age 65, you will automatically be enrolled in Medicare Part A, the hospital insurance, and Medicare Part B, the medical insurance. And that's what I want to cover a little bit later on after you get through all the Social Security stuff. Just going to give you a quick background about myself, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, as as someone pointed out, I have an accounting and tax practice up in Silver Spring. It's called Easy Accounting and Financial Services. Um, let me just go back one slide here so you can see it. Um, I'm a certified financial planner, accountant, charter life underwriter, charter financial consultant, a registered health underwriter, also a registered employee benefit consultant. First of all, don't get concerned by all those degrees. My wife is actually threatened to make me into a thermometer if I get one more degree. <laughs> but I promise you, I'm done getting degrees. Most of my time is spent teaching federal employees about their benefits. I do seminars around the country, retirement, retirement seminars, mid-career seminars. Uh, I have seminars for new employees. What do I teach? I teach both CSRS. How many people here come by the old retirement system? CSRS, okay? Welcome to the Old Timers Club. Uh, how many people are covered by the newer retirement system? The fellow employees. Both really good systems. One is not better than the other. They're both very, very good. Um, I also teach financial planning, general financial planning, and I teach income tax planning. I also have some specialty seminars. I have a seminar on the thrift savings plan. How many people contribute to the thrift savings plan? Do. It's a great plan, and um, I also teach things about teach in, uh, seminars on insurance issues, health, long-term care, such as that. The way I run the seminars is very simple. This is not my seminar. This is your seminar. There is no such thing as a dumb question. The only dumb questions you want, you don't ask me. So please stop me at any time. If you need for me to repeat something, let me know. Um, 
I will I'm happy to do that, repeat it. If you want to disagree with me, please let me know. This is an open forum. I'm speaking to you, not to the windows here. So please, go ahead and jump in at any time. Um, as I pointed out, I have an accounting and tax practice and so up in Silver Spring. I'm also a stockbroker, insurance broker. One thing I'm not, let's please set the record straight, I'm not a salesperson. I do not, repeat, do not take clients from these classes for two reasons. First of all, I don't think it's right. The second reason is I'm so busy doing these seminars, I don't have any time to take on any new clients. I average three to five seminars a week all around the country, sometimes around the world. So again, I don't have time to take on new clients. But if you do want to get a hold of me to ask a question about any benefits you have, anything, CSRS, FERS, Social Security, tax planning, insurance planning, anything you want to know, I want to give you two places where you can send me questions and I'll answer questions actually free of charge. I write for the Federal Employees News Digest, it's all blue newsletter, it used to be, they don't have a blue newsletter anymore, it's all digital. And I write a column every week called the Informed Investor Column. In this column, I try to keep federal employees informed about the benefits. I write columns on CSRS, FERS, Social Security, TSP. If you'd like to subscribe to the Federal Employees News Digest, there it is, federaldaily.com. I also write publications for Federal Employees News Digest on various topics. I have separate publications on CSRS, FERS, TSP, their Social Security. I, was, I have a publication on Social Security. Now let's get to the free stuff. These publications, by the way, can be downloaded. See where it says Federal Soup? Federal Soup is an online forum run by Federal Employees News Digest. Now, there's several aspects to the online forum, but one of which is questions and answers. I run that part of that, of that uh, online forum. It's called questions and answers. If you want to ask me a question after you leave for that, I know somebody who does, please direct your question to federalsoup.com. If you've never done this before, when you get onto that website, federalsoup.com, the first thing you need to do is register as a member. How do you register as a, me as a member? It's very simple. Make up a cute member name. We do not need to know your full name. We do not need to know where you work. All we're trying to do is keep track of our members nationwide. And once you do that, you go to the bottom of the screen there under a category that's called pay and benefits. It says ask the expert a question and send a question to me at federal's at, uh, under pay and benefits. I will answer your question. I want to point out that federal suit has been an ongoing thing now ever since September 10th, 2001. It started the day before 9-11, believe it or not. And they've actually archived all the questions and answers that have been generated over the past over 12 years now. There's currently 10,800 questions out there I've answered. They're all archived. So you could do a Google search. For example, put in Social Security, Medicare, CSRS, and all, all the questions come up with the answer. But in case you, the question is not there, please go ahead and ask me a question at federalsoup.com. The other place you can send me a question is where you found my articles, at myfederalretirement.com. I write articles two to three a month on this website. You have free access to those articles, and you also can send me questions. Any questions about that? <coughs> okay, with that, let's go ahead and get started because we're going to talk about Social Security. Question. When I say the words Social Security, what comes to mind? Mm -hmm. Old? Old? Is retirement old? Yeah, most people say, yeah, I'm waiting for the... Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Not anymore. Not anymore. Going broke. Going broke. That's encouraging. That's <laughs> nice to know. Well, let me, let me say there's more to Social Security than waiting on the porch for the checks to come. <laughs> yes, Social Security, you know, they say it's, 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 it's for old people, retirement checks. Let me tell you what Social Security is not. It is not a retirement system. People get the idea they can, when they retire, can live off Social Security. Anybody have an idea, on average, how much a Social Security replace of, let's say, one's final wages? <coughs> you can work into your late 50s, early 60s. What percentage will Social Security replace of your wages, assuming you start drawing benefits at your full retirement age? Anybody want to make a guess? 30%. 30 to 45 percent. 30 to 45 percent. That's average. Now, that's a pretty wide range. The 45 percent applies to individuals who have relatively low wages. Somebody who, let's say, in their average wages throughout their lifetime may have been anywhere from, let's say, 35 to 50 thousand dollars a year, if that much. The 30% replacement refers to individuals who have 
higher wages on average throughout their working lifetime. We're talking about anywhere from, let's say, seventy to hundred thousand dollars a year average. That's throughout their average wages throughout their lifetime. Does that make sense? Somebody who has higher wages gets a smaller replacement of their wages with benefits. And somebody who has lower wages gets a higher requirement. Let's take three steps back. Does that make sense? Yes. It does for the following reason. Think about the lower waged worker. Were they paying into a retirement system? Were they paying into CSRS or FERS? Were they putting money into a 401k plan? Were they contributing to IRAs like we all like all of us do? Hmm? Probably not. But the higher wage worker is. So the higher wage worker is covered by a retirement system. They're saving, they're putting money into IRAs. So they don't need such a high replacement of their wages with Social Security. So Social Security is there to supplement your other sources of retirement income. But so look up here, I have four bullets. We talk about Social Security, disability benefits. Now how old do you have to be in order to receive Social Security disability benefits. How old do you have to be? One age. Mm -hmm. One age. You have to have a certain number of credits, which we're going to get to in a few moments. In a few moments. But I've seen individuals in their 20s getting Social Security disability benefits for life. I had a neighbor, Gordon. Unfortunately, Gordon passed away this past May at the age of 38. Married, three small kids. Gordon was diagnosed with stomach cancer in January of 2012. He was a lawyer. He worked in the Senate for about six years. He had to retire. Under FERS, part of the FERS retirement is Social Security Disability. So when he had to retire, he was receiving a very small FERS annuity check. He only had six years in. But most of his retirement consists of, most of his benefits consist of Social Security Disability benefits. He got a check from Social Security, not much, but he got a check. His wife got a check. We're talking about family benefits. And so did his three small kids got a Social Security disability check because Gordon was receiving. These are called family benefits, which we're going to talk about today. And then <laughs> Gordon passed away last May at the age of 38. Survivor <laughs> benefits were paid out. To who? his wife and to his small kids. And how long will those benefits be paid? Well, his wife is not working now. She probably won't go back to work when the kids get older. Once she goes back to work and she can't receive the check anymore, we're going to talk about something called the earnings test. If you earn too much money enjoying Social Security and you're under full retirement age, you can't receive the benefit. But his three small kids will be receiving Social Security children survive benefits until the month they turn 18. Until the month they turn 18. And finally, the last piece of the Social Security puzzle is Medicare. Now Medicare started, the original Medicare, Part A and Part B, started in 1965. When Social Security came, was started and was passed by the Wagner Act in 1935, Congress passed it, President Roosevelt really pushed it, Franklin Roosevelt, really wanted to have Medicare, also as part of Social Security. But Congress at that time wasn't, wasn't going to provide, you know, they didn't want to do it. It was too expensive. Harry Truman tried to get it. He was unsuccessful. President Eisenhower didn't show much interest in it. President Kennedy brought it back again. Unfortunately, as you know, 50 years, a week from tomorrow, he passed away. And then he couldn't get it through. But Lyndon Johnson, two years after Kennedy passed away, got Medicare through Congress. So those are the four pieces of the Social Security puzzle. I also want to give you a brief history here about, about the retirement benefit. Um, the whole idea of Social Security is that for X number of employees putting money into the system, earning credits, their Y number of retirees getting money in terms of benefits, retirement benefits. When Social Security started in 1940, the first check was sent out. Anybody want to know the ratio? Workers putting money in, retirees taking money out. Anybody want to venture to guess what it was back in 1940? Not that bad. 16 to 1. 16 to 1. The first person to get a Social Security check at the age of 65 was a, a woman named Ida Mae Fuller. 
She got the first check. She lived in Burlington, Vermont. And how much was the first check for? $22.54. She got that check on January 31st, 1940. Now, she turned full retirement age in January 1940. She was born in 1875. How much money did, did Ida May put into the system? Zero. Because she turned 65 in January 1940. How long did Ida May live to? 1975. <laughs> she got 35 years worth of Social Security checks, totaling $22,000, and she paid in zero. Zero. Okay? Anybody want to know the, anybody want to venture the guess today what the ratio is? Employees putting money in? Two to one. Two to one. It's two to one. As recently as a couple of years ago, 2008, 2009, it was four to one. What happened since 2008? It's called the recession. Yeah, it's partly old age. The baby boomers are getting that point now where they are eligible to draw Social Security. You can get a Social Security retirement check as early as age 62, as we're going to find out in a few moments. Somebody who turned 62 in the year 2008 was born in 1946. Okay? And that person, let's suppose that person was working in manufacturing had a good job, then came the recession. Person lost the job, couldn't get another job. They, their real intention was to wait until they turned full retirement age, 66, to start drawing benefits to, to get a full Social Security check. But they didn't, they couldn't. Why? Because they needed the income to pay their bills. So that person was forced to take Social Security earlier than expected. And that has been repeated time and time again since, since 2008, putting more strain on the system. Of course, the recession, with so much unemployment, fewer people putting money into the system. Okay? So that gives you a sort of a brief, brief history of what's been going on since 1940. Okay, what we're going to talk about mainly is the retirement benefits and survivor benefits today. We're going to get into Medicare later. We're not going to talk much about disability. Most people in this room are qualified to get Social Security disability benefits. i got to tell you, though, Social Security has a very rigid definition of what disability is. If you have a drinking problem, you're not disabled, according to Social Security. Okay? You've got a drug problem. Okay? Disability means you can't work, period. You cannot do any type of work. Okay? All right. So let's talk about the retirement benefits, the retirement benefits first. Um, and, and, and we're going to talk about Medicare, as I said. Now, how do you qualify for a Social Security retirement benefit? How do you qualify for a Medicare benefit? Well, in order to do that, you must be at a certain minimum age, and you must be, have contributed a certain number of, of, of money. Called, you must have earned a certain number of of, of, of credits. Now, what are these credits all about? Well, let's take the retirement benefit and we'll take disability also. See this word OTSI? OTSI? If you look on your statement of earnings and leave, or payroll statement, you should see those five letters. Because that summarizes the Social Security Medicare payroll tax. The 6.2% FICA, FICA stands for the Federal Insurance Contribution Act. Okay? You contribute 6.2% of your wages to Social Security if you are a FERS employee. What does a CSRS employee contribute to Social Security? No. Zero. Zero. But those of you who are covered by CSRS, don't lose hope. There is a way of getting your 40 credits, as I'll talk about in a moment. Forgot to mention to you, I am a retiree of the federal government. I worked 32 years under the old system, CSRS, and during those 32 years, I paid zero into Social Security. But I am contributing right now to Social Security because I'm self-employed. We're going to find out in a few moments. Self-employed, you're paying the full amount of Social Security tax, the employer portion and the employee side. Yes, sir. Can I get a first name, by the way? And then you ask yeah, my name is David. David. Very quick question. Every yes. time you say CSRS, does that also apply to the Foreign Service Retirement System? Um, I believe it depends when you came in, right? The old system. When did you enter, David? When did you enter federal service? No, I, I am under the Foreign Service Retirement System. I know, but when did you enter? Uh, 1978. You're on the old system. 
Right. But when you say C, can we substitute the C for F? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You got to remember, David, ladies and gentlemen, that as a foreign, if you work overseas, okay, um, normally under CSR risk, does anybody know how much you contribute of your paycheck to, to CSR risk if you are working, let's say, in the, in the States? How much of your paycheck goes to CSRS? What percentage of your paycheck? 7%. 7%. I believe, if you, when you're a foreign service, 7.5% of your paycheck goes to CSRS. And if you're a FERS employee and you work overseas, okay, you're in the foreign service, 1.7% of your, 1.3% uh, of your paycheck goes into FERS every payday. 1.3 percent, whereas if you're working in the States, 0.8 percent. So the answer to your question, David, yes. If you were hired before January 1st, 1984, you are CSRS hired after, you're covered by CSRS, if, you're, if you were hired after January 1st, 1984, you're covered by the newer retirement system. The big difference between the two systems again, under FERS, you are paying into Social Security, under CSRS, the old system, the older system, you're in. Does that answer your question? Yes uh, and no. The question is, is the foreign service retirement system compatible with the civil service retirement system for purposes of Social Security benefits? Yes. Yes. Or is not. Because under the old system, we're going to find out you're subject, if you're, you were hired before January 1st, 1984, you are subject to the Social Security offsets, the windfall eliminating provision the government pension offset that people who were hired after January 1st, 1984 in the Foreign Service are not affected by. Okay? So the answer is yes. Yes. Okay? All right. Now, to get a retirement benefit, okay, from Social Security, you must accumulate 40 credits, a minimum 40 credits of Social Security. Now, how do you get a credit of Social Security? First of all, you've got to be covered by it, okay? You have to be in a, in, a, in a system which you are paying the Social Security tax, such as FERS, okay? And you're paying the Social Security tax, FICA tax, which is equal to 6.2% of your wages. That's the FICA tax. Now, the 6.2%, 5.4% actually goes to the Social Security Retirement Trust Fund. Is there a trust fund out there somewhere? Please tell me. Somewhere out there. In a lockbox somewhere? Mm -hmm. And 0.8% of, of the 6.2% goes to the disability trust fund. So that's the OAD. That 6.2% is matched by the employer, in this case the federal government. Okay? Again, if you're covered by the newer system first. Okay? Up to a maximum wage base. <coughs> up to a maximum. Okay? Now, in your books, I had showed you, okay, I want you to have a booklet there, okay, and if you please go to page, yeah, page one, this is the outline portion, not the slide, the outline. And by the way, the slides all have page numbers on them, so you know where I am, okay? So you see on page one, there should be a page one, um, and it has a page at the bottom of page one. Everybody follow me? Okay? Page three. Okay. Page three. Yeah. Page one. Four. Is, one is the table of contents. A, a regular number, not regular numbers. Page yeah. one. Everybody, am I on the right page? No, you're on page, page three. three. Okay. okay. Now, okay. So everyone sees the, uh, on the bottom of page, 2000, uh, page, page one, for the year 2013, the FICA tax here is a 6.2%. Okay, and then it has on the bottom the maximum earnings under Social Security. What's the maximum earnings that is subject to the Social Security tax this year? 113,700. 113,700. What does that mean? <coughs> Ruth. So Ruth said correctly that once you reach 113,700 this year, 2013, the, the employer stops taking out the 6.2% tax, a FICA tax, until when? Until, and they'll start up again the first pay date of January. The first, your first pay date in January, 
And I believe I heard that for 2014, in case you're interested, the maximum wage base will be $115,100. One, one, five, one hundred, I thought I heard. Okay, it's a, it's a little over $115,000. You pay that 6.2% of your wages, and so does the employer. Now here's a question for you. Because you're working two jobs, you moonlight. You're earning $80,000 here at Foreign Service, right? $80,000. And you got another job this year, paying you $50,000. Your total wages for the year are $130,000. You went over the, the uh, maximum wage base by almost seventeen thousand dollars Did you pay too much into Social Security for 2013? Both you and your employer? Yep. Will you get the extra FICA tax back? Yep. Yes, you will. When you file your income taxes next spring, there is a, on Form 1040, a line that says excess FICA. It's a tax credit. Anybody do their own taxes? Anybody do their own taxes? Using software, I hope. Don't ever try to do your taxes by hand. It'll be injurious to your mental health. Let me tell you, trust me. There's great programs out there. You don't have to go to an accountant. You can use TurboTax or tax cut, great programs. But when you enter the W-2, the program will see that your combined wages were over $113,700, and you'll get the, the, the excess tax that you paid, 6.2% of almost $17,000, back as a tax credit. What about your employers? Do they get the extra money back? No. Uh, no, the employer does not get the extra money back. Only you do. That's like Social Security. Okay. Then we also have the Medicare. The Medicare tax. The Medicare tax, which is how much? 1.45%. Now, I want, to have a, I want to have a question for all of you here, the old timers. Did federal employees always pay into Medicare? Can anybody remember a time we didn't do that? I can. I came into the federal government in the early 1970s. Until January 1st, 1983, federal employees did not pay the Medicare Part A, that's the hospital insurance tax. We didn't pay it. It's a payroll tax. But then, effect, then, with Congress making all these changes to Social Security Medicare, effective January 1st, 1983, Congress said federal employees have to start paying the Medicare, even those employees under the old system. So here's what it comes down to. What is Medicare Part A? When can you get Medicare Part A? What is the earliest age you can get, assuming you're not disabled? 65. 65. Should you take it at 65? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't care if you're retired. I don't care if you're working. Why should you take Medicare Part A at age 65? It's because it's free. You like stuff that's free? How did you pay? I'm sorry, first name. June. June. How did you pay for it? Uh, you did pay for it. Why? Because you've been paying that payroll tax of 1.45% for at least 10 years. You've been paying. Now, suppose you're married. Right? You've been married to someone for at least 10 years, and your spouse hasn't been working. They were a stay-at-home dad or mom. You're eligible for Medicare Part A. What about your spouse? Are they eligible for it? Absolutely, because they've been married to you for at least 10 years. Yes, sir? If they're not an American citizen? Um, it depends where, which country they're from. Because the United States has tax treaties with other countries, such as Britain, such as Germany, and because those citizens pay into equivalent Social Security and Medicare, they're going to be eligible for the American Social Security and Medicare, because we have a tax treaty with those countries. Because remember, we got to remember, our, we have to have a tax treaty, and there are many, many countries the United States has tax treaties with. Okay? Okay? Good question. All right. Now, we're going to talk more about Medicare later on. But let me just say this much, that originally Medicare, the pay, Medicare payroll tax, had a cap. They capped it, just like you do for Social Security now. But that cap came off on January 1st, 1993. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got to tell you something. I remember those days when I was working for the government in the late 80s and early 90s. I used to look forward to this time of year. 
around November because I had reached that cap and I, they wouldn't take out the 1.45% until the end of the year. And I had some spending money for the holidays. Oh, I used to look forward to it. But then it stopped on January 1st, 1993. Why did it stop? Well, this was part of the deal with Congress and President George H.W. Bush. I want to give you a quick history lesson about that. Anybody remember the 1988 Republican Convention? Please, it's not a political statement. It's not politi I'm not being political. It's a, it's giving me some facts here. Remember the Republican Convention of 1988, 25 years ago? What did President um, George H.W. say? Read my lips. Yeah. What happened? Well, he got elected. The ensuing administration, there was a rising deficit. Sound familiar? Congress said, we've got to do something to stem this rising deficit. And Congress raised taxes, and as a result, one of the compromises, one of the one of the one of the agreements was that the the, the cap on Medicare wages was removed. In all fairness to President George H. W. Bush, I'm not disputing. He said, "Read my lips" at the convention, but I'll tell you what he really said. He said, "No New Texas." But he got Texas. We don't need a new Texas. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. Okay. All right. So that's the 1.45%. The I is insurance. OAD is a, an S survivor. Guess what? Survivor benefits don't cost you anything. If you ever anybody ever attended a, a, a retirement class on CSRS or FERS, can you give a survivor benefit to one person? A survivor annuity? I'm doing that for my wife. Yeah. Okay. It's costing me 10% of my annuity every year. Mm -hmm. I have to pay 10% to give my wife a full survivor benefit. Okay. But under Social Security, there is no cost to give a survivor benefit to a spouse, to a child who's under the age of 18. You pass away, you have children under the age of 18, they get these survivor benefits, which I'll talk about later. Okay. Um, how about to a parent? <laughs> Let's take the following scenario. We have mom or dad, or both, living with a child. Mom or dad do not have any income whatsoever. Mom or dad are totally dependent on this child for income support. What happens if the child dies? Mom or dad, or both, could qualify for the child's Social Security benefits. Hard to believe. But ladies and gentlemen, in this economy, in this day and age, this is happening. Okay? Parents have to depend on their children. Okay, so let's go through some more basics here, and then we'll go ahead and get to the juicy stuff of that. This is a review. Here. In order to receive a Social Security retirement check, there are two requirements. One, you must accumulate four, at 40 credits of Social Security. Once you've accumulated your 40 credits, you're guaranteed a retirement check. You heard it from me, write it down. Guaranteed a check. You heard it, write it down. It's what over said. Guaranteed a check. But the 40 credits only does what? It gives you the minimum benefit. The more you pay into the system, the more you'll get in benefits, ladies and gentlemen. Keep that fact in mind. Don't say to me, well, I've reached the maximum. You never reach the maximum. Yet. Okay? You will reach the maximum, I should say. I should just say, re re revise what I just said. You will reach the maximum, as we're going to find out a little bit later, that if you've paid the maximum Social Security tax for 35 years, you've always reached the maximum benefit, right? And you start receiving Social Security at full retirement age, you will receive the maximum benefit. You'll see this later on, okay? But the 40 credits get your foot to the door, okay? When can you get the Social Security benefit? You've got to be at a minimum age. And what age is that? 62. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the problem. If you decide to take Social Security as early as age 62, your benefit will be permanently reduced. The earliest age you can get a full Social Security check is something called full retirement age. So without further ado, let's find out what full retirement age is. If you could please go to page 
Yes, go to page 8, table 4. Okay? Okay, page 8, table 4. Page 10 in our package. Uh, well, I was looking at a different yeah, table. two is fine. Page two, table two, I was looking at a different table. It's fine. Because on my table here, on page seven, it's the same thing. But please, yeah, please go to page six, table two. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Find your favorite year of birth. And tell me, what is your full retirement age? Join the club. Good. Thank you. We're on the same club. Anybody have 65? 67. I hear 67? 67. Okay. So. We're going to pick on me. Ruth, if I talk, started taking Social Security at age 62, how much of a reduction do we see there? What percentage of the full benefit do I get by starting Social Security at age 62? You get three quarters. Get, I would get 75% of the benefit. Right? Now, this is not an all or none proposition. The closer you are, you could start at 63. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm 62 now. I'm 62. I didn't start taking Social Security in January when I turned 62, nor am I going to take it this coming January when I'm 63. Because if I take it this coming January when I turn 63, the reduction will be 20%. The closer you take Social Security to your full retirement age, the less reduction. Once you reach full retirement age and start going Social Security, there is no reduction. And you say, well, why didn't you take Social Security now? The reason I'm not taking Social Security now is because I am working. As we're going to find out in a few moments, that if you're working, you have earned income, and your earned income is too much, is, too, is above a certain amount, Social Security will take back some, if not all, of your benefits. This year, 2013, if I were to draw Social Security, I'm 62, how much could I earn without losing my benefits? $15,120. Ooh, I'm happy to report I'm earning more than $15,120 this year, okay? But for every $2 I would earn above $15,120, Social Security would yank back $1 of my benefits, and they will. They'll take it back. I'll have to pay them back. So what good is it if I'm taking Social Security now? Okay? Because I'm going to end up giving it back. Now, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Suppose somebody reaches full retirement age and they're working. Could they draw Social Security and not lose any benefits? Yes, they could. Because the earnings test is over the month you reach full retirement age. When you reach full retirement age, ladies and gentlemen, that month, you could work and draw Social Security with no limitation. If you wait, though, by taking Social Security past your full retirement age, start drawing, you draw it, let's say, if I started drawing it at age 67, I would get more of a benefit. Just like Social Security takes away, if you start drawing it before full retirement age, if you wait past full retirement age, Social Security will give you something called delayed retirement credits, DRCs. How much are they? 8% per year until age 70. For every year you wait, you get 8% more starting at your full retirement age. My full retirement age is 66. If I started waiting, if I, if I waited to age 70 to start taking Social Security, I would get 32% more compared to starting it at age 66. Now, let's, let's, let's analyze this. What would be the advantage of taking Social Security early? You get the money. Spend it. Enjoy it. Right? You may need it. What's the disadvantage? What's the disadvantage? You're getting less. What's the advantage of waiting to take it? Pass for retirement age, you'll get more money. What's the disadvantage? You could die. But trust me, you will not need the money in heaven. Okay? You won't need it. Yes, ma'am. First name? Juliet. Julie. Juliet. Juliet. Yes, Juliet. Okay. In the Foreign Service, sometimes people 
have to or choose to retire at quite a young age. Yes. Okay? Yes. So they get an offset, I think. But, I mean, okay. But, so. Does this is under FERS, Juliet? Yeah, this is under FERS. It's called the Retirement Annuity Supplement. That sounds good. So yes, that's what right. Okay, but what happens? Only foreign service. It's not State Department Civil Service. It's okay. only foreign service. Oh, let me ask you a question. Is it subject to an earnings test, too? Yes. In other words, if you earn too much money, I'm talking about the equivalent yes. that's... I don't, I don't yeah. really understand it, because yes. I'm asking questions. Yes. Let me just ask a question. Even though I think you're going to answer it for me, yes. let me ask the expert, and yes. then... Yes, I'll try. Okay. Okay, so, and my colleagues have asked me to ask this as well. Okay. So, let's say you retire and you're only 56. Yes. So, until you're the age of 62, yes. you have to get this supplement. Yes. But then does it mean you have to take your Social Security at 62? The answer is no. Because okay, it's the same thing as a retirement annuity supplement because people retire before 62 and because Social Security is one of the pillars of the FERS retirement, okay, and people retire before 62, I think it's Congress decided to give these individuals who retire before 62, something, a bridge, if you will, between yeah. the time they retire and age 62. But there's nothing in the law says that once they reach 62 and this supplement or offset stops, that they have to start drawing their Social Security. Okay. So they get the supplement until 62. Yes. And then the supplement stops. Automatically. It does not mean that they have to take retirement. That's correct. That's correct. Well, the one more thing is that if you're earning more than sixteen thousand a year supplemental income, yep. like if you're doing WAE yep. work, then you also lose that supplement. So it's the same thing as the FERS retirement annuity supplement. It works the same way because that's something also to the same earnings test that Social Security has. Okay, okay, all right. Yes, sir. First thing. Yeah, Barry. Barry. Um, I. I I, we used to use the word permanent, that if you took it at 62, you'd permanently be locked in. Yes. Now, I thought that you could pay it back within the first year and change your mind. We're going to get into it. It's called a redo. A okay. redo. Okay? A redo. <laughs> that, as, as opposed to, um, well, the redo, the do-over. Okay? It used to be you could pay it back at any time, and everything would be forgotten. And all the money, you know, any earnings you got on that money between the time you got started and, and, the, and you got, they got you know, all the earnings, interest events, you didn't have to pay any penalty, you kept all the interest, you just had to pay back the principal. That was until December 2010. Now the law says that if you want to redo, do over, you have to do it within the first year. If you start drawing Social Security at age 62 and, and you say, oh my God, I made a bad mistake. As long as you pay back what they gave you, no penalty, no interest, before you reach age 63, no problem. If you start at 63, pay it back before you reach age 64. You've got to do it within the first year. But as I'm going to talk about probably towards the end, even with the, if you, if you don't, if you blow it, if you blow it, you don't pay it back within the first year. Once you reach full retirement age, you could suspend your benefit, suspend it, until age 70, and then for every year you wait, between your full retirement and age 70, you'll get 8% more added to your benefit at the time you suspend it. You, get to, you, get, you will get delayed retirement credits. Okay, delayed retirement credits. Okay? Okay. So there are advantages of getting Social Security. Before full retirement age, there are benefits getting it after full retirement age. Okay? Now, Okay, I have something up here that how do federal employees in general apply, uh, you know, qualify for Social Security? Well, if you're covered by the older system, you came in, entered federal service before January 1st, 1984, you're not paying the Social Security like myself. You have to do it either you got some credits before you came into the, to, to the federal service and or then you retire from federal service and earn some credit to get a job or better yet here in Washington what does everybody do when they retire from federal service what do they do Contractors. Hmm? Contractors. they become a consultant right they're self-employed right we have so many consultants in Washington we have consultants for consultants that's how many we have okay one slight problem with being self-employed being a contractor 
if you are a contractor, self-employed, you file Schedule C regarding Social Security. What's the, social, what's the FICA tax again? What's the percentage? 6.2%, right? And who's paying that? The employee. Who's also paying that? The employer. Imagine. What happens when you're self-employed? You're both. You're both sides of the aisle. You're paying the 6.2% on both sides. You're paying 12.4% of what? Your net profit. I'm self-employed, okay? I have to pay 12.4% of my net profit to earn, get, my, earn, get my credits, okay? Um, does anybody here serve offset? That means you're paying both into CSRS, the old system, and Social Security. Probably not, okay? And the rest of us are covered by FERS. The FERS is when you are paying Social Security. So you're paying the Social Security tax. <coughs> Another way to get Social Security is that if you are married, you've been married to someone for at least 10 years, I should say. And then, correction, you've been married to somebody for at least nine months. If you've been married to somebody and you're divorced from that person, you're married to that person for at least 10 years and been divorced from that person for at least two years, it may turn out that their Social Security benefits are more than yours. And by taking half of theirs, you might be better off than taking your own. Okay? Very interesting. Hmm? And this invites for some planning opportunities, which we'll get into later. This is what was the subject of some of my articles I wrote about planning opportunities for married people. But if you're under the older system, CSRS, please, please do not spend your spouse's Social Security money because you're not going to get it. Ladies and gentlemen, my wife has paid the Social Security her entire life. I will never see one penny of her benefits because I am a CSRS annuitant. As I'll talk about later why the government pension offset, the GPO, affects me. Okay? All right. Exactly. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Okay, now I want to put a I want to put a question on the table. Let's try to answer this question. What is the best age to take Social Security? Should you take it early? Should you wait till full retirement age? Should you wait? Now to answer this question, we have to make one very important assumption: that if you're going to take Social Security before full retirement age, you're not going to be earning a big wage. Okay. You're going to be working extremely part-time, if that much, earning no more than the earnings limit this year, $15,120. Okay, we have to make that assumption. So, I want to open the floor for a volunteer. Who wants to earn a dollar? Yeah. <laughs> right out of the box, Ruth. Right? Ruth, I have a dollar here for you. Okay, don't take it yet. <laughs> i got to give you a, a proposal. Okay, here's my proposal. Ruth, I'll give you the dollar. You can take it, enjoy it on me. Okay? The counter proposal is give me the dollar back, and if you're kind enough to invite me back here in four years, I will come back here and give you a dollar and twenty-five cents guaranteed. Well, I'll tell you what, Juliet, would you mind watching this dollar in the meantime until I answer questions? I can't spend it, can I? No, you're gonna watch it for me. Okay. All right. You do a good job, I may let you go. All right, look up here on the on the screen. I found out that my Social Security benefit at age 62, uh, age 66 rather, is $1,000 a month. Okay? At age 62, because my full retirement age is, 60, is 66, if I take Social Security at age 62, you see the 25% reduction? 25% of 1,000 is 250, 250 from 1,000 is 750. The way I analyze it is follows. If I take Social Security, at age 62, getting $750 a month for four years, which is 48 months. And now you're going to ask me, what happened to the COLAs? The COLAs, the cost money adjustments, they don't amount to diddly squat. It's not worth getting into the cost holding adjustments because they're going to get worse if Congress gets their way. They want to get into the chain cola. So let's forget about the cola. Okay? For example, this coming January, what's going to be the cola? One and a half percent. One and a half percent. Boy. This is great considering uh, what you know. Prescription drug prices are going up. What 20, 25 percent food costs. You know all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's wonderful that Congress did that. Okay. All right. 
So $750 a month times 48 months or four years is $36,000. On the other hand, if I started taking Social Security at age 66, getting what? $1,000 a month. How long would it take me to recoup the $36,000? Well, what is the difference between $1,000 and 750, 250. If I divide 250 into 36,000, I come up with 144 months or 12 years. Can anybody interpret what that means? That means you catch up at 60, at 88. 78. 78. It really so means, worth it. you're right. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Are you worth it? it really means, ladies and gentlemen, what, 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 um, June, I'm sorry, June said that if I took Social Security at age 62, and if I were to die before age 78, I made the right decision. If, on the other hand, I lived past 78, I made the wrong decision. Now, as I said a few moments ago, the reason I'm not taking Social Security now is because I'm still working. I'm not going to take it next year either, because I'm still working. I intend to work. I, you know, I just like to work. Okay? I would tend to be you know, content, just going to keep working. Okay? When I reach 66, can I take Social Security and work? Yeah. No earnings test. Should I wait till 70? If I waited to age 70 to take Social Security, 8% per year for four years, that's 32%, that benefit would be what? $1,320 a month if I started taking Social Security at age 70. Is it worth it waiting to age 70? Go to the same analysis again. If I waited to age 70 to take Social Security rather than starting at age 66, how long would I have to live to make it worthwhile? Answer, age 83. It ain't going to happen. I'll probably be out here by age 80. Why? Genes! Neither one of my parents made to eight. I lost three grandparents by the time I was five years old. They don't live, they don't live long in my family. My wife hates when I talk like that, but I don't, it's a fact of life. I can't help it. I'm careful, but this is just a fact. Yes, Jim? Um, I just wonder though, isn't there also the factor if you need the money? Because um, if you just that's kind of a seminar I may not, maybe not with you. Yeah. Ten years ago, right. people would often encourage you to take it at 62 right. because you have that money to invest in the stock market or invest in yada, 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 yada. But now, um, most non-super risky things right. are paying, you know, 0.45 for a $10,000 CD or whatever. So if you're not going to take that money, if you don't need the money, and so you're going to pocket it, you're going to put it somewhere. There's it no where that it seems to me generates the return the same as reading it. You make, make a very... I mean, make, you make a very good point, June, and I'm just going to relate an example an example of that. I had a gentleman in my office who worked, worked, worked in private industry last summer, turned age 66, reached full retirement age. And he asked me, Ed, should I take Social Security now? Should I start targeting it now, now that I'm 66? First question, do you need the money? No. I don't need it. How about your, anybody in your family? No. I'm on, we're okay. We're in good shape. Okay? Next question. If you were to start drawing Social Security now, what would you do with the money? What would you do with the money? He said, I would probably invest it. I said, invest it? What do you mean? Oh, just put it in the bank. Put it in the bank? <laughs> yeah, 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 like a one-year CD. What are they paying? Minus 0.2% these days? <laughs> okay? I said, sir, if I could tell you, I could get you an investment that gives you a guaranteed return of 8%. What would you say to me? He said, I would say you're full of it. Yes, I can. I can get you something. It's called Social Security. You wait one year, you're guaranteed to get 8% more benefits. Now, Bruce's point is, because, I'm sorry, June's point is about, about, about you know, what you can get today. Between 62 and 66, <coughs> if you're going to bank the money in some fashion, 
my question is, is if you're still just going to bank it and right. not spend it, bank it somehow, invest it, <coughs> then aren't you still just better off letting it go into full retirement or not? It depends because remember, you're getting 62 and 66, you're talking about getting what's that, a 20, um, six, uh, you're talking about you have to get a, at least a six and a quarter percent, a six, six or a six and a quarter percent return, you know, per year guaranteed. And that's before taxes, right? You're talking about, you know, after tax return of six and a quarter percent, you're talking about eight to 10 percent guaranteed. How do you know that? You know? I mean, I've advised people who have TSP, they retire at 62. You're better off taking TSP between 62 and 66, and then stopping your Social Security, taking a minimal amount of Social Security at 66, okay, and then start and then start drawing Social Security, okay, and then leaving, you know, let your TSP grow for a while, okay, to preserve your TSP. Well, my father took Social Security at age 65. This was back in 1984, when he turned 60, 65. Back in those days, these delayed retirement credits were 6%. People in those days didn't do the delayed retirement credits, because why? Remember the 80s? What were interest rates like, right? 18%. Yeah, you go to the bank, open up a CD, get what, 12, 15%, they give you a toaster, a t-shirt. <laughs> Remember those days? Those were the good old days, right? Yeah. Right? So what good is it taking to lend your Social Security getting 6% more when the bank is giving you a one-year C 12 to 15%? Okay, you're better off knowing. But now with interest rates so low, the temptation is don't take Social Security, right? Wait. But again, it all depends. If you're a single individual, the actuaries say the following. Let me summarize this, and I'll tell you another hand I'm taking a question. The actuaries say this. That if you're a single person, never married, okay, you're not in the best of health, do not expect to live past age 78, let's say. You are best off taking Social Security as early as possible. If you are in better health, and especially if you're working at 62, 63, 64, 65, before your full retirement age, don't take Social Security. Wait. But if your health deteriorates, then you're not going to stop working and you take Social Security. My feeling is this. This business of delayed retirement credits, waiting past full retirement age, I personally do not buy this issue of longevity. I don't, I don't go for it. It means nothing to me. Because you may have longevity in your genes. But I invite you to drive out there on 66 and 695 and tell me, has anybody ever died on those roads? Right? Because if you die suddenly, God forbid, all bets are off. That's it. My feeling is this. Once you reach full retirement age, take Social Security. Okay? Especially if this means you can preserve your TSP account, right? Let it grow more. Let it grow more. It's worth, you know, taking it over time. Yes. Um, Neil. Uh, my name is Tom. Yes. Um, maybe this is a question. It's sort of about this. Uh, maybe it's beyond the scope. I, I understand the financial uh, aspects, but my question is really: Does it also enter into consideration? Is it going to be around? I mean, what's the health? Are they going to change the rules? Are they, is there going to be a means test? Are they going to run out of money? Is there, are they going to change the rules in midstream? Should you take it now so, you know, before they don't have it anymore? If Congress does anything to change the system, it's going to be grandfathered. That's like they did in 1983. People born before 1938 were not affected by the new rules. Full retirement age stayed until 60, you know, it stayed at 65. And then Congress has, has, has not changed the rules since, in 30 years. I think Congress will do something to help preserve the system. For example, I think they're going to raise, they, they will raise, uh, raise full retirement age to 69, okay? I think they're going to gradually do that. For people born probably after 1985, I think they're going to raise the, the, the Social Security tax from 6.2%. They might remove the cap 
on Social Security wages like they did for Medicare wages. I would not worry about the system going totally broke. Because ladies and gentlemen, you can call me old, call me crazy, call me stupid. But in any Congress, any administration, government of Social Security, there would not be enough police, military, and security in this town from preventing the White House and Congress from being burnt to the ground. 200 years ago was the War of 1812. What happened in the War of 1812? What did the British do? They burned down the White House. They tried to do Congress, they couldn't. But if any Congress or administration gets rid of it, AARP will accomplish what, what the British didn't do. You heard it from me. Okay, I hope that a laser fears. Yes, sir. Uh, Tim, yeah. the um, question I have is for uh, uh, once you reach FRA, yes, and you opt to keep on uh, working and not draw Social Security, right? Is uh, particularly for people under CSRS is uh, the forty plus quarters and. Uh, increased earnings, a, a, an additional factor not to take Social Security? You mean if you're working for the federal government under CSR? No, no, no. If you're working... You're retired. You're retired and you're, you're working consultant. and you're contributing to Social Security where under CSRS you weren't and you're trying to build up your quarters or something. It only can help because the more you pay into the system, even though you, as, if you're under the old system, your Social Security benefits will be reduced. And I'll talk more about that later, how they're reduced because of the WEF. Yeah. Okay? Putting more money to the system can only result in one direction for your benefits. Up, not down. You so never will go up. And this is beyond the 8%. This is beyond the 8%, correct. Beyond the, yes, sir. Are there any circumstances in which it's advantageous to wait past Senate? No, um, absolutely not. The question is, is there any circumstances in which it, it pays to wait past 870? Okay. No, because you're not going to get any additional benefits. None whatsoever by waiting. When you reach 70, if you've not taken Social Security, you're really, really not doing yourself a favor by waiting. Because you're not, your benefits will not go up. The only way they're going to go up is if there's these colas. You'll get those small colas, but you're not going to get the 8%. You know? Good. Um, I'm going to have to live a little before 4 because my car will be towed. Okay. So you may get to this a little bit later or okay. maybe not. Okay. But um, in terms of the full retirement age, which for me is 66, Okay. I'm also, because um, I left federal government service and then I returned, Yes. I'm essentially in a FERS offset where I'm subject to, it doesn't, it's not called an offset, but there are those of us, it's not just me, that um, are subject to the windfall. So <coughs> the windfall reduction. So you're under SERS offset, not FERS offset. I, I don't care. It's not when, did you enter federal, so when did you enter federal service? I but, initially entered federal service in 71. I left, and then I came back again. When in did you leave? Uh, 81 or 82. And I came back. Yeah in 87, 88, and I was given the option, old system or new system, right. duh, I took new system. I didn't realize that eventually there was a windfall thing, nobody told me that. So blah, blah, blah. My, my question, because specifics are, only, are not interesting to other people, is when you subject, I am subject to the windfall. If I were to take that now, my, my retirement benefit, right. I, at 63, right. I'd be subject to the 25% or whatever it is, plus the windfall right. reduction. Right. Just we'll accept that. If I wait until full retirement age, right. I get the full retirement <laughs> benefit. Right. But it's subject to a windfall reduction. It may it's not be. I'll tell you why. Because you'll have at least 30 years. I of don't. I have 23. Okay, it won't be the full force of the window. I understand that. Right. My question right. is, right. so we all understand that for whatever reason you're subject to this right. windfall, it, it gets in, and essentially there are two penalties if you take right. before your full retirement age and windfall. Right. Right. My question is, right. if I wait until full, re if I wait beyond full retirement age, yes. is there any effect on the windfall penalty? I think the answer is no. The answer is no. And, and I have read that it actually kind of dings you more. 
Well, actually, no, it doesn't anymore, but here's the thing. And if you retire, you start drawing Social Security at 66, and you go out and get a job, and you pay the Social Security, the amount of your years of so-called substantial earnings will go up, which means that the more years that you have of substantial earnings, the less impact of right. a windfall. But that, That's really, exactly what's happening to me now. I really wanted to just focus on the last question. If you're subject to the web, the web, the, the, web, the windfall, right, right, WEP, right. If you and your full retirement age is 66, right. If you are not working, right, if you put your federal retirement or right. blah blah blah, right, you're not working, right. Is there is there a benefit to waiting beyond your full yeah. retirement yeah. age? in terms of reducing the... Not reducing the WEP, but it's just going to reduce your benefit, the 8%. The benefit right, itself. So from the, um, the, the, the benefit itself, you're going to get the windfall, whatever it's called. That will come to get you based on your years of substantial earnings. That's right. Whenever you apply for Social Security. But Social Security, Social Security will know when you're starting. So if you start at 67, you're getting 8% more. The effect of the WEF is that it reduces the benefit by about 50%. So instead of getting a 4%, uh, 8% increase in benefits, you'll get a 4% increase in benefits because of the WEF. Okay? Okay. Okay. Now, let's talk about how your benefit is actually calculated. Okay. Um, all retirement benefits. You get so, let me ask everyone a question. Do you get your social? Do you get social security statements? Yeah. You got. You cannot. They will not be mailed to you. You have to go to www.socialsecurity.gov. www.socialsecurity.gov and open up an account. My state. My state. Okay. And they will tell you each year, when they recompute your benefits, when you go into your account, what your benefit will be at age 62, full retirement age, age 70. They also show you your earnings history. Earnings history, okay, from which they compute your benefits. Get your benefits. Now, and I encourage you to do this every year. Why? Because you can see what your benefits are in today's dollars. Number two is, I want you to look at your wages that you earned through the years and make sure they are correct. As we're going to find out here in a moment, Social Security is getting the information from your employer, okay, via your W-2. Social Security computes those benefits, okay, and, okay, those people who serve in the military get extra credits by the fact, for the mere fact they serve in the military. Anybody here serve in the military? Okay. There is a publication on socialsecurity.gov called Military Service and Social Security. Military Service and Social Security. It's a, it does go to socialsecurity.gov under publications, Military Service and Social Security. You're getting extra credits for serving in the military. Okay? Serving in the military. You can read, if you want to read, it's right here. You can go to it later. It won't come up. All right. Now, so what is Social Security computing here? Something called your primary insurance amount, the PIA. The primary insurance amount is defined as the amount of your monthly benefit in today's dollars at full retirement age. This is what they're computing every year. Of course, if you start your benefits earlier, in eight, your full time age, and that would be like age 62, you're going to get 75% of that amount, or 70%, depending on your forward, whatever, or something in between, depending on when, 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 you were, when you were born, okay? If you start later, you get more than the PIA. Everything is computed based on something called your average index monthly earnings. Now, what is the, I call the Amy. What is the Amy? If you could please turn to page 10. Now I got the right page. Table 5, page 10. Page 10. Okay? Okay? Page 12. 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 Page 12.
maximum wage base. Okay, now what is column C about? What are your taxable earnings? Where is Social Security getting that information from? From your employer via your W-2. I sort of put together a little W-2 here. And let's look up here. Here is a W-2. You have here, for those in the back can't read it, I have taxable wages in box one, box two is Social Security wages, box three is Medicare wages. Okay? And they have other good stuff on there, like federal tax taken out, and so state tax, I'm not going to get into that. Okay, so let's do an example here. Okay, let's do an example here. Somebody tell me what their gross wages are. Okay, gross wages, make it an even number. Don't tell me $92,430.25. I want them an even. Gross wages. What is that, in 2013? Yeah. <laughs> Make it even. Hundred thousand. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Anybody put money into the thrift savings plan? Okay. So what do you put into the TSP? <coughs> even. I should say the traditional TSP. Okay. You maximize, right, Ruth? All right. So gross wages is hundred thousand. TSP contributions twenty to traditional TSP contributions twenty three thousand. So what are your taxable wages? Does everybody agree 77000 What are your Social Security wages? What about if you're CSRS? If you're covered by the older system. What are your, stock, what are your Social Security wages if you're covered by the older system? Zero. Zero, okay? But if you're covered by the newer system, does everybody agree it's 100000 What are your Medicare wages? Everybody. 100000 All right. That was the easy thing. Now we're going to get to a hard thing. What do you pay for health insurance? Uh, you under the Federal Employees Health Benefits Program, FEHB? Good. Still. Okay. Health insurance, annual. What do you pay in health insurance? Even number, please. 10,000. No, 25,000. 5,000. 3,000. Okay, now, what are your taxable wages? 34. 30? Mm -hmm. 70, 74? Why? Because uh, the money you pay for health insurance is not taxable. It comes out of uh, gross salary. It's called premium conversion. Thank you. Thank you. Okay? Do you have to do premium conversion? Can you use it the old way? Can you have the money taken out of your after tax wages? No. Mm -hmm. The answer is yes, you can. Why would somebody want to do that? Because they have an excessive amount of medical expenses. Anybody itemize in their income taxes? Yeah. What do you have to have in total medical expenses in order to deduct them? Oh, it has to exceed 10% of your adjusted gross income. Can you include the premiums you pay for health insurance as yes. part of your medical expenses? Yes. No, you can't because you take them out pre-tax. But during the current open season, you tell OPM that for the year 2014, you want to have them taken out post-tax, you can. If you expect a lot of medical expenses next year, God bless us, it should not have been anybody. That's true for health insurance. It is not true for dental and vision insurance. Those premiums have to be taken out pre-tax. It's a law. Okay? Yes, sir. You're talking about the current situation. Sure. Okay. So that people that retired some time ago, this doesn't replicate what their W-2 would look like. Well, well, yeah. Before 2000. Right. Because before 2000, they didn't have premium conversion. Yes. They started the year okay. 2000. Okay. Yes. And retirees, by the way, can't have it this way. Retirees have their annuities, uh, their premiums taken out after tax. Yeah. That's law. Annuitants. My premiums are taken out after tax. Okay? All right. So what are your Social Security wages? $3,000 of health insurance. 
Nope. 97. Because the premiums for health insurance are taken out before all taxes, federal, state, Social Security, and Medicare. Anybody have dental insurance? Same thing. Anybody have vision insurance? Same thing. Anybody putting money into flexible spending accounts? FSAs? Do you have that? Yeah. Same thing before all taxes. So ladies and gentlemen, what Social Security is looking at every year is your box two. Box two. That goes over to what? Column B there. But let's face it, what you earned back, what is this, 1951? It's not worth much to that. So you see that thing in column D, index factor? Social Security <laughs> indexes wages back since 2003 to these index factors, and they come up with column, they multiply column C times column D to come up with column E, the index earnings. Now, it is column E that Social Security is looking at every year. They pick out the 35 highest numbers and then add them up. And then when they add them up, they come up with a total, okay? Call it T sub 35, and divide T sub 35 by the number 420. We're trying to come up with the Amy here. Why 420? Because in, there are 12 months in a year, we're looking at 35 years, okay? So you multiply 35 times 12, come up with 420, divide T sub 35 by 420 to come up with the Amy. Now, people say to me, well, Ed, what good is it to keep working? Will my benefits go up? Yes. Because many of you were working, let's say, in the 70s, 80s. Your wages then were a lot less than now, right? In my case, I have a bunch of zeros. Between 1975 and 1996, I was only working for the my business back in 95, okay? So what I'm earning now, right, my net profit, and by the way, for, for self-employed people, they're looking at schedule SE IRA, uh, Social Security, SE, okay? That's a form you have to follow when you're self-employed. And my net profit is replacing my zeros from earlier years. So which direction can my benefits only go? Up. 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 By working. Hmm? So what's the maximum benefit now? Okay. The no. question is, what is the maximum Social Security benefit? Let's take an individual who was born in 1947. They're turning 66 years old this year, right? And that individual paid the highest possible amount of Social Security each year for how many years? 35 years. They always reach the top. This year, the maximum Social Security benefit, monthly benefit for such a person is $2,520 a month. Two five two zero. That's pathetic. <laughs> That's $30,000 a year, right? Is this their only? Is, the, is this their only social security? Is this their only retirement income? It shouldn't be. That's right. It shouldn't be. Now suppose that person waited to age seventy. If you take thirty-two percent of thirty thousand, they're going to get close to forty thousand dollars a year in social security benefits by waiting to age seventy. That's the maximum. Now the question is, what's the minimum? Mm -hmm. Suppose somebody born in nineteen forty-seven <coughs> only. Paid for, only earned 40 credits of Social Security. That's all I have. Forget about the windfall, forget about any type of offset here. How much would be that person's monthly benefit? $119 a month. You say, ooh, that's terrible. Anybody familiar with Medicare Part B? Medicare Part B to medical insurance? Is that free? No. You have to pay a monthly amount. Anybody know? what the minimum Medicare Part B monthly payment, monthly premium is. It depends on your income. We're talking about the minimum. The standard is $104.90. That's $104.90 a month. There's a little known rule out there that the minimum Social Security benefit can never be less 
than the minimum salt Medicare Part B premium. How do most people pay for Medicare Part B? Most people. Where is it? Where are they? How are they paying? It? It's deducted from what? Social Security. Their Social Security check. Okay. Think about this. This person has these 40 credits, right? They're getting $119 a month. Social Security's taken out. I'm sorry, Medicare's taken out. $104, almost all, close, about $104, $105. And they have money left over to buy coffee at 7 Eleven. <laughs> right? That's 12 bucks a month. Was it about 15 bucks a month? Enough for coffee. Isn't that nice to know? Is it worth getting your 40 credits? Suppose you're not getting a Social Security check. How do you pay for Medicare Part B? You send them a check. They send you quarterly statements. You've got to pay for it yourself, right? People say to me, ah, I only got 20 credits of Social Security. It's not worth it. That's not true. Because you're not going to get back to the money you paid in. Trust me. They're going to keep it, right? So you might as well go out, work five years. I mean, the, most, the most credits of Social Security you can get a year is four. That's the most. We didn't talk about this. I'm going to say this very briefly. The most credit to Social Security you can get in a given year is four. You got to have 40 credits of Social Security to be to get a retirement check. So how many years would you have to work to get your minimum 40 credits? Ten years. Used to be you had to work throughout the year. That's what they call them. They used to call them quarters of coverage. You had to work in the four, four quarters of the year: January 1st to March 31st, April 1st to June 30th, July 1st to September 30th, and October 1st to December 31st. Those are the four quarters of the year. You had to work in each quarter of the year to get your four, four quarters. Now, this, is back, this goes back 35 years to January 1978, Congress said, we don't care when you earn the equivalent of four credits. You can earn the equivalent of four credits in an hour, a week, or spread it throughout the year. Anybody here is short of Social Security credits? You know, Walmart is hiring greeters for the holidays. The holidays are coming up, right? I found out that in the month of December, they will pay you $4,600 to be a greeter. Now, why am I saying that? Because this year, what is the well, how much do you have to earn to get one credit of Social Security? $1,150. If you multiply four times 1,150, what do you come up with? $4,600. Work one month to get your four credits. Come back in January and do inventory, they'll pay you close to 4800 Because in 2014, one credit of Social Security, you have to earn $1,160. So now you'll have your eight credits only, only by working two months. Once you have your 40 credits, you're good to go. It's all a question. It's all I have. Yes, yeah, so is there a minimum uh, Social Security payment after the windfall offset? If your income is below, if you are, you, are you, David, are you married or, or single? Married. Okay. If you and your wife's income, adjusted gross income, is less than $170,000, the law is that the windfall cannot reduce you below that $104.90. They've got to give you enough to pay for Medicare Part B. They can't penalize you to the point that you got to pay out of pocket for Medicare Part B. But of course, if your income is above 170, 170,000, then all bets are off. How are the credits, is it too uh, complicated to go into here, how the credits are for military service, how those enter in? Yeah, it is. Um, all right, fine. I, 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 I think, uh, you know, if you go to the website, myfederalretirement.com, www, that, uh, that website, I have an article how they compute what Social Security does for the extra credits you get by sorting them out. Are those also subject to reduction, windfall reduction? No. No. They can't penalize veterans like that. All I can, all I can say is that you've got to be careful, okay, about this. You know, it wouldn't hurt if you go down to the Social Security Administration, make an appointment, and just review the credit you're getting. Make an appointment and find out. Yes, Jim. Uh, Jim. The, uh, you say on the, the Social Security site they'll calculate uh, once you your what your benefits will be. That's all these steps you just went through. Yeah, it's all what those you need all. to do is just check to make sure that they've got the right uh, W-2 information. Basically. And 
you know, it's, it's a matter of junk in, junk out. That's why I'm asking you, check your social security statements. In particular, the, the, the W-2 wages you see there are correct. Because if the W-2 information is wrong, your, your, the benefits are going to be calculated correctly. But correct. will they figure in the, this military credit? And that yes, of yes. If this article talks about, I think, if, if, you, if you serve between 1960, after 1967, the benefits are automatically included in. You want, but if you serve between 57 and 67, I think you've got, when you apply for benefits, that's when they figure it in. That's the article. So. Yes, sir. Uh, Dave. Yeah. Uh, suppose I'm already getting this windfall of this big retirement, 104 a month, maybe over 65. I want to do Christmas every year for the next 20 years. Yeah. Will that change my 104? You mean while well, I'm on the fall? Okay, I, I got the minimum Social Security benefit. If I'm retired, I'm taking it. Okay. And I want to go to Walmart every year for, right. 20, for 20 years. Right. And right. I get a whole bunch of quarters. Yes. Will that change my $104? Question from, from Dave. Dave is, uh, he's growing Social Security right now. And he's walking, working at Walmart. Well, by working at Walmart, increase the benefits. The answer is yes, because Walmart is going to send in Dave a copy of W-2, and Social Security every year re-enters the data. So the lower wages you had in, in previous years are going to be increased by the higher wages. So which means your benefits can only go one direction up. Up. You're never going wrong by work working. You guess what the time? Okay. Okay. Here's the final piece of, the, of, the, of, the, of how they compute the primary insurance amount. This is the formula for 2013. What Social Security is going to do is they're going to take 90% of the first $791 of your Amy. That $791 is called the first bend point. Then they take 32% of, the, of the next $3,977 of your Amy up to the next bend point, which is 4768. And anything above 4768, they take 15%, and this is how they compute the primary insurance amount. Those bend points are adjusted upward, usually, okay, if average wages in this country go up, or in one year, 2011, it actually went down. Why? It's called the recession. National wages actually, average national wages went down. So what Social Security <coughs> do? They decreased the bend points for the year 2012. Those average wages went down. Let's do an example. Saw, saw a hand. Any question? Yes, sir. Yeah, in standard with the question about survivor benefits, do they fluctuate depending on whether you um, take your, whether you uh, enter Social Security before your full retirement age or not? Um, the survivor benefits are based on your primary insurance amount at full retirement age. So if you were to pass away, say your wife's getting a survive, getting a widow benefit, then the widow benefit will be based on your primary insurance amount at full retirement age. But if he or she, notice I use he or she because when I say widow or widower benefits, who are we talking about? What happened with the Doma decision? We have new, we have, we have new filers now with Social Security, spouses and same-sex marriages, okay? But if, the, if that spouse is younger than full retirement age when they apply, then the benefit will be reduced. Reduced benefits. But as far as me <coughs> deciding to take Social Security at 62 or waiting to that doesn't prejudice my survivors that take That's correct. That's correct. That's correct. <coughs> Let's do an example. Yes, sir. John. But, John. So conversely, if I wait to do age 70 to take it, yes. if my wife has a spirit, then die, my wife gets 50% of my PIA at age 66? No. She gets the 70. She gets, she gets, the, she gets, she gets the higher benefit. Okay. Because you wait. Yep. First both ways. Here's my, uh, my situation. My Amy is $1,500. I went to the math here. You know, I'm not going to bore you with all the details here. But my PIA, this is today's dollars, is $938.78 a month. In today's dollars, if I started taking Social Security at my full retirement age, 66, I would get $938.78 a month. Okay? 
at the today time. If I take it at 62, like this year, I would get 75% of this. If I wait till 70, I'll get 132% of that. Okay? That, that, that amount's going to go up next year, 2014. Why? Because the bend points will probably go up a little bit. Number two is, thank God I got a net profit this year from the business. It's going to replace the zeros from earlier in my career, which means my Amy's going to go up. Yes? I continue to find that mind-boggling to ask a simple question, truly. Um, the Social Security website has a lot of calculations. Yes. And it has one that says, you know, plug in all your earnings. Plug right. in your earnings from 1966. Right. Called MyPA, MyPIA. My and then My if PIA. you do all of that and you plug right. it in from right. all of your tax returns right. over the last 25 years, right. it gives you an uh, what they call an estimate of what your your social security benefit will be if you took it at eight. Right. In your experience, are those calculators reasonably accurate? Yes, you they are. Yes, they are. Correctly? Yes, they are. It all depends on what you're inputting is your W two social security wages. You know, from you see a box two right there. My question to you is: Is this are these numbers correct? That's what you have to determine. Right. But if, but if you've gotten your little social security statement yes. each year, yes. uh, I'm on, yes. and it gives you the numbers that it says yep. it cares about, yes. and you yep. double check, and those are correct, Yes. and you yes. plug them into the little calculators yep. that they have, right. in your experience, yes. they're, they're reasonably accurate. They are. Okay. And also garbage in, garbage out. But if you put good stuff in, it'll be good. The only thing. June, I'm going to say here now, you're probably not going to like. The numbers they show you are correct, but Social Security has no idea that you're affected by this. They don't know you're covered by them. What, that, what, what number did I show you about the thousand dollars and getting a full retirement age? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I picked that off my Social Security stake. But Social Security didn't know I worked under the old system now. They had no idea. Okay? so. When you look at your Social Security statement, you've got to keep in mind that if you were covered by a retirement system in which you didn't pay the Social Security, that includes the old system, you had your federal service before January 1st, 1984, and don't take it personally because anybody who worked for a state or a city, you have a public pension in which you didn't pay the Social Security, and there are such states, Ohio, Texas, California, in which state yeah. workers, teachers, firefighters, uh, police officers did not pay the Social Security, they're covered by the state pension, they're affected by this too. Their Social Security statements are not going to show the effect of the WEP. Right. The WEP. Now before I get into the WEP here, I, I, I see some hands here. Yes, sir. Uh, just stepping back about uh, two working spouses. Yes. And so they're both the same age. Both are, they think they're around, they're full retirement age. Do they both get their full amount? Or is it being single? You mean, if we have, we have, we have yeah, two, two working it's people. It's pretty simple. They both, let's say they both earn $80,000. Both, both work throughout their lives. Yeah, well, exactly. And they each, you know, draw, let's say, full retirement age. They yeah. start drawing. Each is going to get their own check. If, they, if it turns out that their own benefits is more than half of the other spouses. I'm going to get into spousal benefits in a, in a moment, okay? And, okay? But the rule is that you will get the higher of your own benefit or half of your spouses, or God forbid, all of your deceased spouses, or your former spouses, okay? If you were married to someone, okay, and you've reached full retirement, I'm sorry, and you've been, uh, been married to that person for 10 years and divorced for at least two years, then you have rights to your former spouse of Social Security, provided you don't remarry. Because if you remarry, you lose the benefits. I'll get into that in a few moments. Yes, sir. Uh, it's Steve again. You, uh, <coughs> you emphasize that uh, the input is very important. Yes. Obviously, it's clear. It's essential. How do you go back 30, 40 years to verify what your income is? If you kept a copy of your tax returns, yes. right? <laughs> okay. The I, don't call the IRS because they only go back six years. There's another problem here. 
you may have a copy of your tax returns. Like, for example, I, people do keep their returns. I mean, like my wife and I haven't go back 25 years. We, we've scanned them. They're all PDF files. Yeah. We have them on a thumb drive, right? We have a backup, too. You know, we have the main one in the office, and I keep the other uh, uh, thumb drive under my pillow to make sure it doesn't go away. Um, but that's just to have your tax returns. But how about this? Suppose you work for an employer back then who messed up your W-2, the employer's no longer in business. What are you going to do then? Yeah, what are you going to do then? You're screwed. Well, the IRA, I think there is, there is a form you can write down an estimate, what you think the amount is, and the IRS will consider. You know, you know, the, the, the fact that you that your employer messed up and they're going to hold you to the fact that you're you're putting down the truthful information about what your true wages were. Okay. Well, that's IRS. How do you do it for Social Security? Well, that's where that, that that's where Social Security is getting information from. You know, it's from IRS. You have to fill out this form, IRS, and IRS will send it over to Social Security. Okay? <laughs> Even for wages 20, 30 yeah, years ago. Yeah, they always done it. They've always right. done it this way. Any other questions? All right. Windfall. Okay, windfall. Let me ask one more question. Particularly, I want to ask those of you who are under the newer system. I want to ask you, I want to, I want to appeal to your good senses here. Those of you who are under the new system, BERS, which you paid, you paid in Social Security, do you think it's fair for a person like me, who is a Johnny come lightly to Social Security, that I should get a benefit from Social Security that is as relatively high as what you're getting when you paid your entire life in Social Security. You think it's fair? You think it's fair for me? It's irrelevant if it's fair. That's right. <laughs> I'm going to use the word fair. Because well, I want to be honest with you. I think the windfall elimination provision is a good law. Because I don't think it's right for me to get a benefit. But you have a lot of zeros. Right, here's I don't what the understand if it's who it is. Okay, the, the web affects anybody who is receiving a public pension. Old system CSRS, work for a state or a city which they pay for Social Security. And who is getting a pension from these, from these, from the, from these, from the, from the, from the public, from the, from the government. Not new system. Hmm? Not the new system. Not the new system. Okay? Not new system. Not new system. It's only for people under the old system in which your benefit, let me tell you what the bottom line is. We can go through all the gory details, you're not interested. I want to tell you what the, what the bottom line is. The windfall elimination provision will reduce your Social Security benefit on average 50%. 50%, that's what I use. You saw on the screen, how much was my benefit at age 66? My example? That's before the wet. <laughs> After the WEP, what am I going to get? There is, but it comes down to still that 50%. I use 50%. You're safe using a 50% reduction. Again, <laughs> I have all the details here. If you're not interested, I'm not going to go through wait, wait, it. Sir, Here's sir, the fact. Wait, 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 sir, I'm sorry. I've been waiting for an hour and a half for you to explain the withdrawal elimination provision. I have, clearly, many people in the room have more experience with this. Would you? Explain to whom the so it, the, it applies. Yes. And and the windfall elimination is a reduction <clears throat> of your Social Security benefit if you are also receiving a public pension, and the reduction is on average 50 percent. So when you look at your Social Security statement, they say you're supposed to get 500 dollars a month. That's before the wet. After the WEP, you're going to get $250 a month. The WEP only applies if you have retired from federal service or public service. If you're still working for the federal government and drawing Social Security, you're not going to be affected by the WEP. Once you retire, it will be. Let me share an example with you. I have a gentleman in my community. His name is Steve. Steve? Smart guy. He worked for HHS, Health and Human Services, for about 38 years. Steve was on the old system, okay? He had about 50 credits of Social Security. He got an adjunct professor somewhere, I don't know, okay? 
Steve turned 66 years old in December 2010. He decided to take Social Security. Why? He was still working for the federal government. He turned full retirement age. Could he draw a Social Security and not be subject? And could he could he draw a Social Security and not be subject to an earnings test? He reached full retirement age, so he could earn as much as he want and draw Social Security. Was he affected by the WEP? No, because he was still working for the government. He was still working for the federal government. He was not affected by the WEP. So Steve saw me shortly after he started drawing Social Security. He said, Ed, you know something? What you're telling people is all wrong. I'm not affected by the WEP. I said, you're right, Steve. You're not. He said, why not? Because you're still working for the government. He said, will that always be true? No. I said, Steve, the day you retire, that's when the reduction is going to occur. Because OPM is going to notify Social Security that you retired. He said, that'll never happen. They'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> he retired last December 31st. He was getting a full Social Security check at the time of retirement. He sees me last February. He said, Ed, I'm still getting the full amount. You're wrong. You're wrong. I said, Steve, you wait. We're going to catch up. So he saw me again in April. Still getting the full amount. You're wrong. You're wrong, Ed. I saw him in July, two months later. I said, Steve, oh, i got to go somewhere. Wait, Steve, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Steve, have you heard from Social Security? He said, yes. <laughs> what did they tell you? Oh, they sent me this letter saying, I own five months of, 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 of reductions. They caught up. Did they penalize them? Did they charge interest? No. They just asked them to pay them back what, half of what they paid them for those five months. They caught up. Again, I'm sorry, your first name? Elise. 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 It's a reduction. It's not an elimination. Okay? So does this affect someone under the old system? Yes. Who's now working as a WAE? Who's brought back to work part time? Are you, re are you retired? Um, my spouse. Retired. Are you retired? I'm, I'm not retired. I'm asking about my spouse. Who is retired under the old system? Yes. Comes back to work as a WAE, a right. part-time employee for the State Department, as to <coughs> And Social he's drawing Social Security? Not yet. Not yet. Um, when he does yes. draw Social Security, yes. Um, is he affected? Yes. The answer is yes. He will be. He will be. He will be once he starts drawing Social Security. <laughs> part-time employment. Part-time only means that he's paying the Social Security in order to affect, in order to eliminate the effect of the WEP. You would have to have at least 30 years of so-called substantial Social Security wages. Now, what is substantial? I think I have it here in the book somewhere. Somewhere in the book here. Table five. All I can tell you is what is substantial wages for this year. They change it every year. It's twenty-one thousand five hundred dollars. So, Elise, if your husband is it, Elise? Helene. Helene. I'm sorry, Helene. No, that's okay. Okay. If your husband is earning more than twenty-one thousand dollars this year as a WAE. That will count as a substantial year of wages. And if he accumulates more than 30 years of so-called substantial wages, there will be no effect on the web. And if you have 20 or less substantial years of wages, then you will be affected by the full effect of the web. That's the 50% reduction. If you have 21 years, it will be like a 48% reduction. If you have, um, 22 years, like 45%. It goes down as you get closer to the 30 years, the effect of the way. Okay. That military credit could enter in and it could further reduce the effect. Is that? Well, again, again, the, social, the military is only going to help you because you're getting those extra credits. Right. Right. Okay. 
And also, when you were in the military, those, those years that you earned in the military could be so-called substantial wages that will get you closer to the 30, 30 years. Because they go back, the, the WEP goes back, the substantial year table goes back to 51. Okay, it was like three thousand dollars back then. Okay, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, but the the WEP reduction applies only to the seven hundred ninety-one dollars currently inside the first bend point. Yeah, and the reason so it for that doesn't reduce anything in the. In and the it doesn't point. reduce anything beyond the first bend point. And the reason for the you know, only applied on the first bend point is because those people who have few few years of, of Social Security are not going to go beyond the first, their Amy is not going to go beyond the first bend point. That's why they, they, they only affect it on the first bend point. Because that's what most of it is, 40%. It could be, it's 90% it goes down to the budget, it's 40%, 40%. Of course, you know, when Congress instituted this law in the early 1980s, the WEP, who did Congress eliminate from? Who did they make sure, who did they make sure it's not And you know what the rationale was? Why Congress, you know, exempted themselves from the WEP? They don't, <laughs> <laughs> they don't stay. Or, worse, they said being a congressman is not a lifetime occupation. We don't need to be a yeah. like it. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about spousal and family benefits. And to introduce this subject of spousal benefits, I want to give you my own life story, the true story about my late parents. In 1984, my, okay, go ahead. Can Sorry. I come back to the web one thing? Yes, yes. The, I'm the I'm the federal employee, right. and so I'm affected by the WEP. Yes. My spouse has, let's say, never worked for the federal government. Yes. And has Social Security yes. rights and so on. Is my spouse at all affected by the WEP? Um, well, the best way to answer that question is to give you my my, my situation because it'll answer the question. Okay. So your first name. Oh, Brian. Brian and Martian. 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 Okay, Ryan and Martian. Let me give you my own situation. I'm affected by the WEP. Okay. So how much am I going to get? So my example, $500. If I start drawing Social Security now, $500, my wife Linda, how much would she get? A spousal benefit is half of what the other spouse gets. Two fifty. If I were to pass away, what does Linda, my wife, get in terms of a widow benefit? Does she get five hundred or a thousand? She gets a thousand. Why? Because the WEP gets buried with me. So what does that mean as far as Linda's concerned? I'm better off than <laughs> <laughs> Be careful what I eat and where I have. For survivors of spousal benefits, do you need to be, I mean, the spouse needs to be 66 or can get any time? I think, I'm sorry, first thing? Aida. Aida. Let's, I'm going to talk about that, and then I'll answer your question. Okay? I'm talking about spouse benefits. Ryan, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I mean, but, okay. And, and so there's just no relationship. I mean, what she earned under Social Security is hers. Right. So, Marcia, you her. paid in Social Security, right? Yeah. Correct. So chances are your own Social Security benefit is going to be a lot more than Ryan's. Right. Maybe. Right? Okay. Maybe. Because remember, Ryan, you're, you're, you're under the old system. Right. Yeah, but I'm a part-time foreign service spouse, so I didn't earn a lot. You got to see the numbers. Yeah. There's a lot of maybe, maybe, maybe. What happens if hers is higher? If hers is higher, mm -hmm. is higher yeah. maybe I don't take mine. But you can't get Marsha's Ryan because you're subject to the other offset called the government pension offset that wipes out any type of spousal benefit. Well, thank you. Okay. Oh. Any type. We're going to get to that. In, in the area, so in, you can't in, get in, any, any spousal benefit from Ryan. You're not going to get any of Marsha's Social Security. I'm sorry to say that. I may as well Sorry spend it then. Y yes, sir. Uh, uh, well, you, you said that 50% is the average reduction. But what are the circumstances in which it goes above 50%? Above 50%? It could be as high as 56%. I use 50% as the average because some people get a, like a 38%. Like a, like a 30, 30, uh, uh, I'm using 50 as an average. Average. Okay? I mean, again, the maximum was 56%. Because that first bend fact, that first percentage, remember, was 90%. 90%. So the maximum reduction, the, 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 um, the, uh, the first the, the percentage would be 40%, not 90%. So if you take four ninths, that's about a little less, that's, that's a little less than half. 
Okay. That's what it is. Yes. It says that when the uh, when the principal dies, the WEP dies with that pressure. Right. right. I can paraphrase. Right. What happens, however, if the spouse is getting survivor benefits from the federal retirement plan? Okay, so um, the case here of Ryan and Marsha, right? right. Okay. Um, Ryan, you're getting a CSRS annuity, or will be, okay? Marsha's getting the full survivor, just like my wife Linda. I pass away, Linda gets a full CSRS survivor benefit, and she gets full Social Security. The fact that she's getting a CSRS survivor benefit has no effect on her own Social Security okay. benefit or the, or the Social Security survivor benefit. None whatsoever. Okay? Another reason for the primary to die early. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, just keep in mind fact one fact. I am a triple loser when it comes to Social Security. I'm a triple loser. Why? I told you about paying both sides of the aisle for the Social Security tax, right? right. Okay. Number two is the WEP, right? I'm affected by the WEP. Number three is I will never see any of my wife's Social Security. Okay. My wife has paid in Social Security her entire life. Mm -hmm. Who does my wife work for? Me. I pay her Social Security tax. Don't <laughs> <Right. laughs> this business. I just can't win. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry, I just, I just want to add one question to the excellent example that you just gave, which yes. was a question of Yes. So now add the surviving spouse that you just described also has their own federal pension under the new system. Yes. Does that affect the survivor benefits that you just described? No, none whatsoever. None whatsoever. So again, Marcia, are you going to be getting your own FERS? Uh, FERS? I work for outside the government. So okay, you're going to get your own pension? Mm -hmm. No effect whatsoever. Okay. Yes. Following up on the, the Ryan and Marsha question. Or Ryan and Marsha. If, uh, if Ryan dies and uh, Marsha then collects uh, both under the um, CSRS system and also the the full Social Security benefit. Yes. If she has a job yes. and is earning a lot of money. If she's under full retirement age. And she's under full retirement age. Yep. What happens to the Social Security? It'll it'll probably, it'll be uh, if, it'll be reduced if not eliminated. Okay, but once she reaches full retirement age, she can earn as much as she wants. It'll, it'll she'll get the full benefit, no earnings tax. And then could she also get her own in this hypothetical case? Um, could she also get her own Social Security at full retirement age? Uh, no, I mean now we're getting greedy here a little bit. <laughs> no, you can't get your own and your sp and your and your and your spouses. You get the higher of the two. Okay, you get the higher. As we're going to find out, because I'm going to give you some plan some planning mechanisms here. Because when it comes to married couples, remember I was talking about single people about when they should take it. When it comes to married couples, it is a you got a lot of planning opportunities here. Okay, which I want to get. And that was the, that, that's one of the reasons I'm here today. You read that article I wrote, those articles I wrote in myfellowretirement.com when it comes to married couples. Okay, okay, okay. Any other questions before I talk about spouse benefits? All right. Um, my late parents. In 1984, my father, when he turned 65, decided to draw his own Social Security. My father had paid for Social Security his entire life. Came back after World War II, worked 40 years, he was a printer. His Social Security benefit was, in 1984, $1,600 a month. Not more than his pension of $200 a month. Okay, worked for 40 years. Okay. Two years later, my mother, when she turned 65 in 1986, decided to take her Social Security. Now, she did not pay for Social Security her entire life because when my father was overseas, she was working. And then when he came home after World War II, I, my, well, I had an older sister. My mother had taken time, took time off. And then I was born in 1951. She was off this entire time. And only when I went into junior high school did my mother go back to work. Working part time. All right. So her benefit in 1986 was $300 a month. And when she saw that, when she went down to the Social Security Administration, she said, that's nothing. And the Social Security said to her, well, look how many years you worked. You didn't pay that much. She said, I know that. But my husband is currently getting $1,600 a month. And Social Security went back and checked that and said, we apologize. We made a mistake. You're not going to get $300 a month. 
you're going to get $800 a month, half of $1,600. It's called the dual entitlement. She gets her own benefit of $300 and added the $500 to bring her up to half of my father's. If her benefit would have been $900 a month, then Social Security would have paid her $900 a month, not $800, because her benefit was more than half of my father's. But it was not. It was less than half, so they brought her up to half my father's. And when my father died, what did my mother get? She took over his payment of $1,600 a month, and her payments stopped. These are called survival benefits. Okay? Yes? If uh, the uh, spouse earned nothing or didn't have 40 quarters or whatever? So suppose my mother never had work. Still gets half of my father. The, the, the spouse does not have to work, does not have to have 40 credits of Social Security in order to get half of the other spouses. Stay at home dad or mom. Never paid into Social Security, they get half of the other spouses. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Would that be affected by a web? That is to say, you calculated what the full Social Security benefit of the employee, so to speak, was. Is that knocked down to yes, it did, it, it, and then 50 percent? That's right. If, 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 if my father would say had worked for the city of Baltimore, that's where he worked, okay? He was getting a city pension, okay? He didn't pay the Social Security. His pension would have been whatever, and, 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 and his own, he got a minimum of 40 credits of Social Security, he would have gotten, let's say, $500 a month Social Security. My mother would only gotten $250. Rather than getting, you know, you know, full benefit, he was getting half. So half of a thousand was, let's say, 500, okay? But when he passed away, then she would get the thousand because the wet would have been buried in the time. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes. I cannot excuse myself, but I've been holding this dollar bill and I. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gaining interest in something, and I don't want to. I, I'm very honest, and I, I don't want to walk away and steal it. Hold it on to another bank. I'll leave it up to you which bank to pass it on to. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. You for a really good My okay. All right. No. I saw another hand here. I'm sorry. Yes. yes. Um, going back to my question, in order to collect spousal survival benefits, yeah. do you need to be okay. 66? Or can that be at any point in time? Say that the spouse is 40 okay. years old, the survival spouse, survival spouse. Okay. And to answer that question, the answer is a widow or widower have to be at least age 60 to receive a widow or widower benefit. But if they take it as early as age 60, the benefit they take will be reduced because they're under full retirement age. They'd have to wait until age 60, uh, their full retirement age, in order to get the full benefit. Okay? Now, what they could do is they could decide they want to get the widow benefit as they're age 60, they'll take it with the reduction, and then when they reach full retirement age, if their own benefit is more than the widow benefit at that point, they'll switch to their own benefit. And that would be the full amount, because they're getting their own benefit, not the widow benefit. They have to run the numbers to see which one's higher. Okay, that, that's the one that you earn by working on your own. You earn your so 40 credits, yes. Okay, okay. Does that answer, does that answer your question? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, but, yeah, but, so in a way, uh, yes, yes. So okay. this is just a comment. So, so, so in a way, the, the fact that, you know, Say that the surviving spouse is, is 50 or, you know, 40 with kids. Then the kids will be able to collect on their own. So then you supplement the lost income through what the kids can collect. And, it's, and, 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 and here's, the, here's the situation. You don't have to be dead in order for the children to collect. Let's take somebody who's 62 and, and they have decided to retire. They're not working anymore. And they got some teenagers. Right? Some teenagers. 12, 14, 15, whatever. And the person says, now, should I draw Social Security now or not? <clears throat> Maybe they don't think about taking Social Security before full retirement age, even with the reduction. Why? Because they're receiving a check, 
and the child and the children are receiving half of what the parents getting. So what can the children do with the money? Spend it? No. Put into a college savings fund. Let's say we have the father getting fifteen hundred dollars a month at age sixty-two, and he has two children, ages twelve and fourteen. What's each child get? Seven hundred and fifty dollars a month until they turn eighteen. They could take the money and put it into a college savings fund, like a five two nine plan. But if the father says, no, I'm going to wait till I reach full retirement age, the children are not going to get the check. Now, God forbid the father passes away, and this could be at any age, the children would get 75%, these are called survivor benefits, of what the father's calculated primary insurance amount was at, age, at full retirement age. But that would stop when the child turns 18. Okay, and that, again, that money can be put into a five to nine plan. These are called survivor benefits. Yes. Follow up on the lady's question: If um, a spouse is entitled to one half of the Social Security yes. of the deceased spouse, yeah. and that spouse turns full retirement age, and therefore is entitled to receive the full amount, but right. otherwise couldn't because of receiving <coughs> too high an income right. in a job. Um, can that spouse wait until 70 for getting her own Social yes. Security? So have a gap of, say, 66 to 70 yep. where that yep. spouse is receiving. That's a planning so strategy, which I'm going to get into in just a few moments. It's a planning to maximize overall benefits. Yes, spouses have a lot of options here. Okay? Yes. I have a question, my name's Kalpna, about, um, could you repeat what you said about the stay-at-home mom or dad, uh, how they would receive benefits? Okay, we have a, a stay-at-home dad or mom. Didn't accumulate 40 credits of Social Security, okay? But their spouse, their spouse did, okay? When their spouse starts drawing Social Security, okay? As long as they're age 62, so the other spouse, they can get half of what their spouse is getting. God forbid the spouse passes away, then the surviving spouse gets all of it. You just have to keep in mind that if the, if the stay-at-home dad or mom starts drawing before full retirement age, that reduction is going to be permanent. They're marked for life. Okay? But again, the state home dad or mom does not have to have 40 credits in order to draw on the spouse amount. Okay? Even though the spouse is getting the retirement, I mean, is getting Social Security also? Yeah. 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 I also want to say this, that if you were married to somebody for at least 10 years, and you've been divorced for at least two years, you have rights to your former spouse's Social Security, half of it, half of it, okay? As long as you're 62 and, you're, and your former spouse is 62, you can draw on half of it. Now, it's different than when it comes to, when it com that's different than when it comes to spouses. Let me go back to my parents. Suppose my father had decided not to take Social Security at age 65. He wanted, he's going to wait to age 70 to start drawing Social Security. Because back in those days, they gave you 6% per year for waiting. So how much more could he get by waiting those five years? 30% more. My mother goes down to the Social Security office in 1986. She wants to draw half of my father's. Guess what Social Security is going to tell her? Can't do it. So why not? Because your husband's not drawing. Your husband is not drawing. You have to wait till he starts drawing before you can get half of his. Now you can draw your own. And then when he starts drawing, switch to half of this. What about, what about filing suspense? We're going to get to that. That's another, that's another option for married couples. Okay? I think we're going to do it sooner than later, knowing the number of people who want to know about it. We're losing people here, so I want to get, I want to, get to that sooner than later. But let me just mention about divorced couples. That this is true for a divorced spouse. This was true for spouses. 
But in the case of a divorced couple, one spouse is going to draw on the former spouses. Does the former spouse have to be drawing in order for this person to draw? The answer is no. The only rule is for a divorced spouse is you're 62, you're drawing your former spouse, you're 62, and your former spouse is at least 62. That's the only, you know, limitation here. If you're 62, your former spouse is 66, your former spouse is not drawing, you can get your half of your former spouses. And the other restriction is you cannot remarry. If you remarry, you will lose your former <coughs> spouse's social security benefit. So what's the moral of the story that if you're the former spouse? That's expensive. Well, we'll get divorced, but, but after you're divorced, what happens? Livingston, you're better off, right? Check, go down the floor and check it out. I can tell you how many people are investing. Trust me. But let me say this, that if you do remarry, and you're married to your new spouse for nine, at least nine months. And I'll leave, you up, I'll leave it up to you to figure out why they're using nine months. Think about this. Miracles can happen in retirement. <laughs> you can start drawing on your new spouses. Which means that if your new spouse's benefit is a lot more than your former spouse's, you're better off, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Very rich. In other words, let me summarize this. When it comes to Social Security, ladies and gentlemen, you can trade up in your benefits. You can trade up. All right. Let's get to the file and let's go to these strategies here. I know you want to hear about this, right? I have three Social Security strategies here. Two of them apply mainly to married couples. One of them applies to everybody, single and married. The first strategy is the redo strategy. I think I mentioned this earlier. You start drawing Social Security before full retirement age, and you discover you made a mistake. You didn't want to do this. If you just tell Social Security within the first year of drawing benefits, within the first year, and pay back to Social Security everything they gave you, everything will be forgotten. In other words, when you start up later on at full retirement age, you're not going to be reduced. Remember that penalty for taking Social Security before full retirement age. You started at 62, your full retirement age is 66, what's the reduction? 25%. If you're four, my benefit was like $250, right? Mm -hmm. I started taking Social Security at age 62. Before I reached 63, I changed my mind, paid back Social Security, everything. The, 200, the $250 penalty will be forgotten. After the first year, you're, 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 you're stuck. You have to continue until full retirement age. Then, when you reach full retirement age, you can stop it. And then you can wait till age 70, if you want that long, to get a higher benefit. Because that's when the delayed retirement credits, the delayed retirement credits will be applied. So your benefit that you stop at what age? Full retirement age. You're going to wait till age 70. You're going to get 8% more to, you know, per year of that benefit you stopped at age 66. It's called the redo strategy, redo. Any questions about redo? All right, let's do the file and suspend. Who would like to volunteer for file and suspend? We're talking about a married couple. Ideally, both of you are about the same age, and both of you have paid in Social Security your entire lives. Anybody want to volunteer? But Dave, you're under the old system. Yes, I am. Yeah, I like to get somebody who's paying Social Security their entire lives. Their entire lives. Yeah, but I had previous and subsequent employment. So you had... You, I had my 40 quarters. Well, I need somebody who has, like, at least 30 years of substantial wages. Sorry. Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'll have to make up an example. All right, here we have Bob and Sue. Bob and Sue were born in 1947. They've reached full retirement age. Bob and Sue have both paid Social Security. Okay? Bob and Sue have both paid Social their entire lives. Bob continues to work. Sue has retired. And Bob decides he does not want to take Social Security at age 66. He wants to wait until age 
seven to start writing. He wants to get that 32% more. Okay? But Sue, on the other hand, has retired. And Sue wants to draw Social Security. But Bob found out about this delayed retirement credit and told Sue. And said to Sue, you know, yeah, I, I can get 32% more by waiting till full retirement. He says, you know something? That's a good idea. I think I'm going to wait till 72 to get my own Social Security benefit. But on the other hand, I need some more spending money. So I think, I think what I'd like to do, uh, uh, Bob, is uh, I want to draw on half of yours. Now, can Sue draw on half of Bob's in this situation? Yeah. Why not? Because yeah. okay. Bruce said because he's not drawing it. You're absolutely correct. Is there anything Bob and Sue can do short of divorcing mm -hmm. that will allow Sue to draw on Bob's Social Security? And the answer is yes. And that is the file and suspend benefit. Here's what's going to happen. Bob has reached full retirement age. Let's say this month. It's November. He's reached full retirement age. He's going to contact Social Security saying, I want to start drawing Social Security this month. And that will allow Sue to get half of Bob's. Sue is a little bit older. She's reached full retirement age. She's going to get exactly half of Bob's. And then, next month, Bob contacts the Social Security Administration and says, I've changed my mind. I don't want to get it. I don't want, I don't want to draw Social Security. Sends back the check. What happens to Sue? He stopped, he stopped drawing. Sue can continue to draw on half of Bob's. And how long will this go on for? Four years? Because what's going to happen when Bob and Sue turn 70? How much more? How much more will each get? Each will get 32% more. That's called file and suspend. File and suspend. Why do you allow that? Why do you allow that? Because Bob is holding off drawing his Social Security benefit, and so is Sue. Social Security has those checks, right? They're only sending out one Social Security check rather than two Social Security checks, and they're holding off for four years. Social Security has the money. They're still, they're still gaining. They're still gaining. Exactly. Yes? Adjust that scenario slightly. Yes. Same situation for Bob. Uh, Sue, however, on her own record, is never going to get close to 50% of what Bob says. Even, he's not going to get 870, whatever. She's always going to be better off getting, uh, getting 50%. But she wants to go ahead and stop drawing it now. Bob's, however, is getting, he's going to gain 32% more, right? Does the base for Sue ever readjust? Her, for her own benefit? Okay, she, Bob files and, files and suspends. Right. Sue starts, Sue starts getting uh, yeah, his 50% right now at age 66. Right. Bob's going to keep accruing right. his, his 32%. Right. And then he's going to start taking it at age 70. Right. Is Sue, however, locked into 50%? Plus four, that she started at age 66? She was getting half of Bob, right? Right. And she's going to continue to get half of Bob's because her own Social Security Thank you. Isn't, a, isn't that much, even the 32% more. She would only want to switch to her own. And no, she doesn't want to switch. She doesn't want to switch. She's locked in. She's basically. locked in, so she doesn't, get, she doesn't get any additional benefits from his base increasing. Oh, yeah, she will. Because, because she's going to get... Wait a minute. She, is she getting half of his? Oh, right. I see what you're saying. She's getting half of his at age 66. Of what he would get. He would get. If he hadn't Yes, the answer is when he starts his own at age 70, she's going to get half of his 32%. So it recomputes. It recomputes, yes. Oh, really? okay. Yes. That's, yes. That's, that's all that's part, that's of, part of follow and suspend, too. Mm -hmm. So her benefit goes up more in this scenario. Yes. Yes. Okay? Any questions about file and suspend? Okay, then how about restricting an application? What is that all about? Yes, sir. Uh, file and suspend. That also yes. applies if the, the spouse never would draw. I mean, the one is drawing on the head. Yeah. That's, that's right. That's right. Right, because I think that um, the scenario was that, uh, the, you know, in this example, the spouse. But I mean, it doesn't have that have 40, 40 Nope, no, nope. no, 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 no,
Um, again, it comes down to where they're from. Yeah. I think the United States has a tax treaty with them. I think they can. And are they like a resident alien? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think there's any problem. I think it's not a resident alien. Kind of as long as they're not getting from Japan to other countries. Right. Can't, you can't get both. You got, you got to get the higher, the highest one. Right now. Okay. Now, what about restricting an application? Let's go back to the, the scenario of Bob and Sue. Um, um, Bob and Sue are, uh, there's an age difference. Sue is, Sue is about two years younger than Bob. Okay? Bob has reached full retirement age. Sue is not. Sue is drawing her own Social Security. Okay? Drawing her own Social Security. She's getting, let's say, $500 a month, not much. Bob wants to wait to take his, but he'd like to get half of hers. Okay? Now, can he get half of hers and then switch to his own at age 70? The answer is yes. Okay? He can get half of hers. The, the half of hers. Now, we'll keep one fact in mind, though. If Sue is two years younger than Bob, Bob is 66 and Sue is 64, what is Sue getting? Is she getting her full amount? No. It's going to be reduced probably about 10%. So instead of getting $500 a month, for benefit, she's going to get $450 a month. So what is Bob going to get? Half of what? She's going to get half of 500 She's going to get 450 and Bob's going to get 250 He's not going to get half of her amount because he's full retirement age. I say that because many times married couples think, well, I can switch to my benefit even though I took it earlier and, I don't, and then I'm going to be, then the, then the reduction is going to be forgotten. Let me explain. I have a good friend in the, you know, the community. He's a vet, he, he retired. He was a veterinarian. He's exactly the same age I am, okay? Born in 1951. He went to a seminar, did by the Social Security Administration. He was really um, excited when he came back. He had, he had to give me all the good news. And his wife, Debbie, is exactly four years younger than him. And Debbie's paid into Social Security for a good number of years. So here's what it came down to, we heard. He said, Ed, when I turn 66, I'm supposed to get $2,400 a month from Social Security, okay? Debbie, when she turns 66, is supposed to get $1,500 a month. So here's the strategy. When I turn 66, Debbie will be 62. Half of 2,400 is 1,200. But because Debbie is starting to draw Social Security at age 62, 25% reduction. That's what Social Security explains to 25% of 1,200 is 300. So what is Debbie actually going to get? Nine hundred dollars a month. And Mark said to me, a friend, he said, oh, "Not yet. That's fine. That's fine. I'm going to get twenty-four hundred. Debbie will get nine hundred. Everybody, everybody, everybody understand the numbers? Any questions?" And then he said to me, Mark, he said, "No problem, because when Debbie turns sixty-six, four years later, she's going to switch to her benefit of fifteen hundred dollars a month." I said, "No, that's not true, Mark." So why not? Because when you make the election to take Social Security before full retirement age, it is a permanent decision that's going to follow you the rest of your life. That reduction of how much, $300, will apply to her benefit at full retirement age, which was how much, $1,500? She actually is going to get $1,200. And if Mark would pass away, how much would Debbie get? 2100 that dollar reduction is going to follow you the rest of your life. The dollar amount and not the percentage. The dollar amount. The dollar so reduction. Everybody follow the numbers here? Mm -hmm. I, mean, I gave you a lot of numbers. A decision to take Social Security, your Social Security, before full retirement age, the dollar reduction will follow you the rest of your life. For your benefit, and for a widow, widow benefit. Sorry, that's before full retirement age or before retirement age? Before full retirement age. 
Your full retirement age is something between 65 and 67. The election to Social Security before full, before full retirement age is a permanent decision. It's going to follow you. The dollar reduction will follow you the rest of your life. So Mark said to me, oh, they didn't tell us that. Well, I'm telling you that. Okay? It's not good news. Okay? Yes. Uh, a wrinkle, if I may go back to file and suspend for just a second. Uh, for those of us uh, that have been under CR, uh, the old system. Yeah, the old system. Since we're going to get hit by the windfall, yeah. um, can we work it the other way around that the spouse who has uh, is eligible for Social Security meets the FRA? Uh, can, can we, for example, draw half of the spouses and continue to work as long as okay, no? Nope. Sorry. Nope. <laughs> the answer is no. You're looking at something called the government or public pension offset. And what the, the government pension offset does, it is a reduction, most likely elimination, in nine times out of ten. You're anybody who's on their uh, a retirement system, such as SERS, will not be able to get any of their spouses or former spouse social security. Okay, unless unless somebody is working for the for that public for that you know government. If you've reached full retirement age, you're working for the federal government, right? You're under CSRS. You can earn as much as you want and draw Social Security, including your half of your spouses or your former spouses or all of your deceased spouses. But the day you retire, what kicks in? The government pension offset. Okay? I knew a gentleman who lives in the community. Who lives there? He started working for NASA in 1959. He preceded the Mercury 7 astronauts. That's how old he is. Born in 1937. Came to work for the government fresh out of college. Never paid a dime to Social Security. His wife did. When Dick turned 65 years old in 2003, born in 1938, his wife Harriet was getting from Social Security $1,500 a month. What did Dick get? $750 a month. Did he keep it? You bet, because he reached full retirement age. He's still working for the government. No government pension offset. <laughs> but the day he retired, back in 2009, 50 years of federal service. Woo. What happened to a $750 spousal benefit? Gone. 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 So the government pension offset, if you're an old timer, you're never going to see any spouses. It must be huge for 50 years. He's not poor, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say I'm really confused. What about the spouse? You've got a, you've got a, you've got a, a, a retiree, a government retiree, foreign service retiree, 66, not, not taking any Social Security at all. Yeah. Working. Not retired, not retired, right? Well, well retired from the Foreign Service, but not, not taking Social Security. Okay. But Receiving right. an annuity, but not Social yes, Security. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, working spouse, uh, 62 years old. Yes. Okay. Uh, spouse full 40 quarters yes. plus. Okay. Yep. Uh, in a situation like that, uh, if, the, uh, if the retiree dies, then the government, uh, the GPO, will kick in for her receiving any benefits based on the, the dead retiree's work. No, no, no. My own example, my wife Lynn, she's not affected by this. She's going to get her Social Security. She could, if it turns out half of mine is more than hers, which it won't be, she can get half mine and a full CSRS survivor annuity benefit. She is not affected. The DPO only affects CSRS annuitants not your spouses. The windfall elimination provision only affects CSRS annuitants. So, the spouse in, in the end of the, not the annuitant, but the spouse will always get uh, the higher benefit of their own or half of their spouses. 
Oh, whichever is higher can't get both. That's right. Can't get three. Yeah, dream. Yeah, that's yes. a dream. So if I understand this yes. correctly, yes. Um, I'm the one who sent in the question writing earlier. I don't know if you got it. Um, so if I understand this correctly, I'm under the new system. Yes. My retired, already retired spouse who is under the old system. Um, if I were to pass away tomorrow, yes. not yet retired, right. I have worked for more than 30 years. Yes. Lots of Social Security yes. survivor benefits yes. for my potential retired spouse yes. and underage children. Does under this, even if he's caring for our <coughs> underage children, does he not get any of my Social Security survivor That's correct. He's not going to get any of it because of the government pension offset. Who would the children, underage children? Underage children are not going to be affected by this. In other words, the children are under the age of 18. They'll get 75% of your calculated primary insurance amount at full retirement age. No reduction, no, no effect. Children get it, but not the spouse. The children will get it, but not the spouse. The only way the children would be affected is that you're under full retirement age. Your drawing to Social Security, the child under age 18 would get half of yours. Half of yours. Suppose you're working. You're violating the earnings test. They're going to take away your Social Security for every two dollars you go above the amount, and they'll do the same thing for the children. Okay? So all those years of working, no, no survivor benefits for the spouse. For the CSRS old the system CRS spouse, old that's correct. That's correct. No social security benefits. Yeah. No social security benefit. I mean, you can give them a survivor benefit from FERS. There's no, there's no effect on that. You can give them a TSB, give them life insurance, and tell them, and just say you're welcome. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Uh, let's say my spouse has her 40 quarters. She's uh, working in the private sector, and I'm old system. Uh, but I also go work at Walmarts and get my 40 quarters, although it won't be substantial. Right. I die. Right. Rep dies with me. Right. Does she get any of the Social Security benefits that I will have earned mm -hmm. by by achieving the 40 quarters? She, gets yeah. she would be eligible for the widow benefit. Mm -hmm. In addition to her own... No. Get the higher the two. Higher now, the two. All she can do is she can take it as early as age 60. I don't want to encourage that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're all talking to you right now. And she's going to be reduced about 30%. Right. But, it, but if hers is, is as it will be, no doubt. Much more. Higher. Then she can switch to hers. She switch. Okay. So, okay. So basically, it works out as if she was a single person. Yeah. You could look at it that way. Yes. And when she switches, to her, right, which is higher, right. If she started drawing at age 60, right, but based on his fairly low, let's right. say his $600 a month, right. So her reduction was maybe down to what $400 a month, so she right. had a $200 reduction, right. Same to the match. So when she then switches to her own, right. It's what, what is permanent is the $200. No, no, in this case it will not apply because she's switching to her own. Because she's switching to her own. Remember, in my example, a person was taking their own. Right. Mark's right. wife was taking her own. Okay, so she's okay. right. not taking half, didn't take it Mark's, taking her own. Okay. In her case, then there's no reduction? No. Okay. no. But you can't collect it in jail. Let me tell you that. Based on this great planning, if you have not applied for Social Security survivor benefits, yes. even though you hit FRA. Yes. Can you do it now and get six months of back benefits? Uh, the answer is probably no. And the reason I say that is because I've had a few experiences where people were even aware of this. And they went down to the Social Security Administration, Social Security said, sorry, you should have known this. One example was I was doing a seminar at one of the museums in downtown Washington. So the Sunny Museum and the gentleman was in class and he told me he has a 14-year-old son and his wife died seven years ago. And no one told him that the son could get 75% of his deceased mother's benefit. So I said, well, go down now. He's 14 years old. Just look at four years' work. He said, well, they give me retroactives. He, he 
went down there and said, no, you should have known this. My neighbor Gordon, my neighbor Gordon passed away. I got a phone call for two weeks after he passed away. Lisa, his wife, came to me desperate. She needed some help. She had a, she had a life insurance policy on the board, but nobody, the life insurance person, they had a financial planner, didn't tell her to call Social Security to apply for a widow benefit and for a benefit for the child. I said, no one told you that? No. So thank God we get we did it. He died on May 10th. We called Social Security. She called Social Security about May 20th, about, about May 25th, whatever. It was a couple weeks after he passed away, and they and the children get their first check. We got her first check in June, because the survivor benefit starts the month after the person passes away. Okay. Yes, Philip. And Marcia. Marcia. They and so the survivor benefits. I mean, the spousal benefits. The deceased had to have been drawing. I mean, you had said in order for to get spousal benefits, the employee the beneficiary, retiree. the retiree, has, has to, to be go. drawing benefits. Right, but this this was. This but now survivor benefits kick in at any point. Well, like you children, they got to be under the age of eighteen. Right. No, but I'm just saying. I mean, but let's if, say if, like if he's decided to defer. And then he unfortunately he didn't have to, yeah he could be he passes he away for whatever 60. reason. I had a case where a gentleman who died at age 52 had three children under the age well one was under the age of 18, and the child Dana she got 75 percent of her father's calculated benefit at full retirement age. He was 52 when he died. His calculated Social Security benefit at age 66 this happened about a couple years ago was two thousand dollars a month. So Dana. Got fifteen hundred dollars a month. That's seventy-five percent of two thousand, and she's been getting that for the past four years. And I told her mother, Carol, put into the Maryland five two nine plan, mm -hmm. the college funds, right? She always she was approached by all these financial planners. Said, oh, give me the money, I'll invest it for you. I said, you tell those people to take a hike. <laughs> all they want to do is just waste your money, right? Fill their pockets with commission. Yeah, if you if you did file when your husband died. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, but then you didn't know about this uh, difference between the survivor benefit of the age 66 and uh, you actually using your own Social Security at 70. And if the Social Security Administration said no, you're not going to get anything because you're still working. Right. And so there's an elimination of the benefit. And then you happen to go to your seminar and you find out about this great planning uh, device. Could you go? down to the Social Security Administration and say, look, I did apply, you rejected me, um, so I'm in the system for having applied and I want to go back to my age of 66 and get benefits from that point. You know, or you're, 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 will they make it retroactive? Will they make it retroactive because you applied And you were given wrong ago. information. You were given well, wrong. I mean, you, you were given right information that because you make too much money to get any Social Security benefits because you're an employee, but you applied and they just said no. You because you're, cause you're, you're under full retirement age. And you're under full retirement age. At that time. Age. At that time. And then if you get to FRA, right. but you didn't apply again at FRA, so you have to retroactively Oh, so you you once you reach full retirement age, you did not apply for your Again. deceased spouse and Social Security. Again, I did. You applied for your own. No, so I I applied when he died. Right. SFL, and you were under full retirement. And I was under full retirement age. And they said and you can't get it because you're earning too much. You're money. earning too much money. Got it. So now today I find out that I should have applied again, or what is it? Because you've reached full retirement age. Because I've reached full retirement age. So yeah. were you receiving any Social Security in the meantime? No. Nothing at all? No. Yeah, you can be, well, they, because the question is, will they make it, the, will they, what, at what amount they're going to start you off? Okay? Um, you, you would get your, your deceased spouse's Social Security in today's dollars. That would include the, co the cost of living adjustments ever since he passed away. No, but I know I can't get it from when he passed away because I was making too much Right, but, but now that you reach full retirement right. age, you can get as much as you want. But only you're, starting at FRA. Starting at FRA, correct, right, because you're still working. only six months ago. 
It was six months ago. Right. You should apply for it now. It should reach for retirement. So what's the fastest way? Walk into Social Security Administration, call the website. The fastest way. Copy that website. That, that email, that, that website right there. I copy that right off the Social Security website. The most efficient way to get your first Social Security check is to apply online. It used to be you had to go down there in person, make an appointment, bring with you your original birth certificate, your marriage license, death certificate in case of a deceased man. Right? A divorce decree. Now you can do everything online. They may contact you and get these documents sent in. But if you apply online, it'll take them days to process your application. So if you want your first check as soon as possible, like December or January, <laughs> you can apply now and you will get that first check in December. Social Security checks are sent out the first three Wednesdays of the month, depending on your Social Security number, okay? It's all, it's all electronic. And, the, and if you apply online now, you still have time now, you would get your first check in December. Just as they point out to them, you're applying for your deceased spouses. And because you reach full retirement age, there's going to be no reduction and also no earnings test. I would encourage it. So is that... Answer yeah, questions. it does. So maybe I might get the retroactive six months, but maybe not. Because I, I already so. applied. I don't think so. You're not going to make it retroactive because you were in the full retirement age and you were working. Right. So they're not going to make it retroactive. I mean, retroactive to my full retirement age. So. Even the, though the, I applied the key, earlier. In fact, you don't want that. Because if, if you do retroactive to your full retirement age, there's going to be a reduction. Because you're under full retirement age when you get your when you got your first check. No, no, no. no. What I'm saying is, I I applied when my husband died ten years ago. They said no because you're making too much money. Okay. And now I know that six months ago when I hit full retirement age, I should have applied at that point for a spousal benefit, but I didn't. If I applied tonight. Will I get my regular monthly check in a month, or will I get six months of retroactive to my full retirement? The answer is you'll get your first you'll get your first your first check next month, and will not be retro you'll not get six months. Okay. Uh, did you get the lump sum death benefit? No. Oh, the, yeah, two hundred fifty bucks. Two hundred fifty five dollars. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, that's. I spent it. That's a benefit that widows and widowers get, you know, for, the, for their deceased spouse. When Congress set up Social Security 73 years ago, Congress and their infinite listing was very concerned how they're going to, how a surviving spouse will pay for the funeral of their deceased spouse. So what did Congress do in 1940? They answered the study. What is the average cost of a funeral in this country? It's 1940. $255. Wonderful. I mean, what problem? In 73 years, Congress has not realized that the cost of funerals going up. It's still the same. My father died 15, 20 years ago. My mother got the payment of 255 hours. Did it pay for his funeral? It paid for one rose. The rest we paid out of pocket. <laughs> well, my mother died. I didn't get any payment because I was not a dependent child. Question. Um, I'm rushing ahead. I'm sorry, because I have to go. Okay. Um, I talked to Social Security. They said that if I wait till 70, my benefit would be 3,217 dollars. Okay. Um, my question is the tax. Okay. I have a federal pension inflation adjusted to 68000 yep. and I will also have mandatory IRA uh, minimum so, requirements. I'll put it to you very simply, um, Ruth. 85% of Social Security benefits are taxed by the federal government. 85%. So what does that mean? So let's say you're getting $3,000, and I'm going to use $3,000 on Social Security. So. 85% of $3,000 is what, uh, about $2,500? So of the $3,000 a month, about $2,500 a month will be added to your other income, IRAs, pension, federal pension, okay. things like that. 
and subject to federal income tax. So another $32,000 a year will be taxed. It'll be taxed. There's talk that all of your Social Security is going to be taxed. Okay. okay? And that yeah. will be taxed at the rate of your total income. Right. With ordinary rates. Ordinary rates. Okay. Now, that's the federal government. Would you believe there are states out there that tax Social Security just like the federal government? Sure. Sure. Virginia does not. West Virginia does. Okay? There's a whole handful of states. Ladies and gentlemen, that is absolutely disgusting. Okay? Now, I have, when I, do, when I teach income tax planning for federal employees, I have maps of states, the good states to retire to and the not so good states to retire to. I happen to live in one of the worst states for retirees. It's called Maryland. They're terrible here, Maryland. Okay? I want to say this, that, um, as I said, there's a handful of states that tax Social Security. Maryland, what they do is, when you get a pension, such as a CSRS or a FERS annuity, this year in 2013, the first $28,000 of your pension is not taxed by the state of Maryland. Sounds good, right? Except for one little problem. Maryland, per se, does not tax Social Security. But well, what Maryland does is, you said, Ruth, you're getting about, about 30,000, let's say about 32,000, about 3,200 dollars a month. Yeah, so that's about, okay, that, that's about 36,000 dollars a year. What Maryland's going to do, if you looked at Maryland, they would take the 36,000, subtract it from the 28,000, saying whatever's left, is going to be tax of your FERS and annuity. Isn't that nice of them? So it's 70 and a half with Social Security income and mandatory distribution on the IRA. Mm -hmm. I may have to be um, And one way would be, consider this. While you're still young, you can afford this. Think Roth, like Roth IRAs. Because Roth IRAs are the only type of retirement income that is not taxed, nor are you subject to minimum required distributions when you reach 70 and a half. We just got started on this stuff here. Ladies and gentlemen, taxes are going up. You can call me old, call me crazy, or call me stupid, but don't give me this rich stuff. I think Congress is intent on raising taxes for everybody. I see everything going on now. Okay? You should try to get as much raw to your name as possible. And don't touch it. And don't, don't have to touch it. Worry about it. Worry about it. Okay? Yes, sir. You mentioned the $170,000 uh, in relation to Medicare. Right. And I, was, I had a question whether that also had any relation to Social Security at all. Is it, is it just for the, the increased amount to pay for Medicare? Okay. okay. Here's what it comes down to. For people talking about Medicare Part B. Medicare Part B since the year 2007 has become what is called a means tested program. The higher income, the more you pay for Medicare Part B. Now look at this. It says here, this is for 2013, if your AGI in 2011 was. This table here was sent out by the Social Security Administration to Medicare Part B recipients this year, people 65 and older. They sent it out last December. Now you can ask the question, well, what are they using 2011 for? Yeah. Well, it's based on your AGI. So last December, the, the people who are getting, Social, are getting Medicare this year, did they file their 2012 taxes yet? They got to go back to the previous year. So this year. Yeah. So if it turned out, if you're a single person, back in 2011, your AGI was $85,000 or less, you pay $104.90 a month. If you're a married couple and your AGI was 170000 or less, each of you would pay $104.90 a month. And we go to the next bracket. If you're single and your AGI back in 2011 was between eighty five dollars and $107,000, you pay $146,000 a month. And you see how it works here. Now, this, you say, well, are they going to adjust these brackets here? And the, for inflation? And the answer is no. What you see now applies this year. It's going to apply in the year 2020 and 2030. That means 
more and more of us are going to be paying high more for Medicare Part B. This idea, and this goes back to the Social Security thing, when, so, when the Congress and the Reagan administration decided to tax Social Security in 1983, 30 years ago, Ronald Reagan had this great idea that back in 1983, why should we penalize the poorer people in this country for paying tax on Social Security? We're going to set these brackets, the, A, the, the, the AGI limits, and this is what they did in 1983. They, set that, they said that if you're a single person and your AGI is over 32,000, 85% of your Social Security will be taxable. Married, 44,000. Why? Because back in those days, people over the age of 65, it turned out to be like 15% of the population had incomes over those amounts. So Reagan said, tell you what, let's not adjust those AGIs. That means more and more people will be paying tax on Social Security. And they, the Bush administration back in 2007 came up with the same idea. Eventually, more and more of us are going to be paying more for Medicare Part B. What you've got to be careful of is what is included in AGI? What's included in AGI? Adjusted gross income. Interest? Interest, earned income, business income. Yeah. Pension income? TSP? Yeah. FERS annuities? CSRS annuities? What about Roth? No. Is Roth included? No. no. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got to think Roth here. Some of your retirement income should be Roth IRAs, Roth TSP. You have an opportunity to put money into the Roth TSP, right? Not if you're retired. Not if you're retired, like me. Well, I, I, beg, I beg to differ. I think it is worth it. Because you can't look back and think, I could have, I should have. Only if I had just a little more income coming from Roth, I'd be so much better off. You know? Two years before retirement? Yes, it's worth it. It's worth it. I, I re retired back in 2006. Boy, I wish I had some Roth. Because unlike the Roth IRAs that have income limitations, if your income is too high, you can't contribute to Roth IRA, the Roth TSP has no income limitations. I've got to give you a seminar on the, on, on the TSP. Because this has opened up a lot of opportunities, the Roth TSP and the versus the traditional TSP. You can actually do both, by the way. You're not, it's not one or the other, you do both. Yes? Medicare Part B, why would you go into Medicare Part B, or for that matter, Part C, D, E, F, if you are covered under the Federal Employee yeah. Health Benefit Fund? I have, it, everybody understand Dave's question? Mm -hmm. I get that question so often. Here's my response. <coughs> Medicare Part A, you agree, is a no-brainer. You've got to take yeah. Medicare, because it's free. Well, you're registered. Yeah. Okay, so why should you take Medicare Part B when you got to pay for it? When you have your federal employees health insurance. Right, and you got to pay for that. And you got to pay for that. Right. So here's the answer. Medicare Part A and Medicare Part B pay on average 50 to 75% of your medical bills. Dave, if you went to a doctor, you're over 65, let's say you're retired. You go into the doctor's office, what do you think the first question will be? This is your first visit to the doctor. It's going to be for the doctor. What do you think the first question will be for the doctor? What's your insurance? What's your insurance? No, it's actually going to be, can I see your Medicare card? What's going to be the second question? Do you have any other? What else do you have? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Because if right. you say, Doc, I have nothing else, just Medicare, you know what the doctor's going to say? Oh, there's the door. Goodbye. I can't afford okay. to treat you. Right. Because most doctors do not accept assignment from Medicare, meaning they don't take, Medicare only pays 50 to 75 percent, they want to be paid the difference. Right. Well, okay. that's exactly my question. So why get Medicare B? Because if you have Medicare Part B and your federal employees' health insurance, everything will be paid in full. Why? Because your federal employee health insurance plans will pay for whatever Medicare is not paying for, the remaining 25 to 50%. Why are they doing that? Because you're paying full premiums. The federal employee health insurance plans do not reduce your premiums if you're on Medicare. So you're saying, well, why do I need Medicare then? The federal employee health insurance plans under OPM, they're a little trick, they're a little bit sneaky. Because if you don't have Medicare, yeah. The federal employee health insurance plans will only pay what Medicare would pay. Yeah. They're duplicating. 
what Medicare is. Isn't that and you're law? stuck with the difference. The doctor, your visit to the doctor date is five hundred dollars. Unless I'm get a secondary insurance. It, I mean a Medigap? No, a Medi I mean a spousal family plan. Okay, I mean, that's gonna that's gonna cost. Well, yeah, but Medicare Part B is cheaper for yourself. You're better off with, with Medicare Part B than a spousal. Both of you are better off with, with federal employees health insurance. Yeah, well then who covers the kids? Yeah. Well you have a self and family plan. Self and family means you, a spouse, and one kid or 15 kids. Yeah. Up until the age of 26. The problem is that if you don't have Medicare Part B, you're gonna, and you're, you're fully retired, you're gonna have out-of-pocket expenses. Right. right now, while you're still working, do you have access to the healthcare flexible spending accounts, the FSAs? They don't have it here? Yeah, not for, not for retired. Not for retired. No, I'm talking about employees. Yeah, but we're you cannot have an FSA if you're retired. That's correct. So when you have when you have when you're retired, the FSA is Medicare Part B. Everything will be paid in full. It's worth it. So it's but, worth it. But what's the question is, what's the difference before having Medicare before you're 65? and after 65 if you don't take up Part B. What, what are you going to lose? If you're over 65 and not a Medicare Part B? Right. Well, it, out if, of if you're 64 expense. and you don't, and you have the federal... Like me. Yeah. And, I'm then, I'm, and then you turn 65 and you don't take Part B, what do you lose? You'll lose what you're going to lose is you're going to be paying... Your, your federal employee health insurance plan is only going to pay what Medicare Part B would pay. Mm -hmm. My doctor charges $500 for a visit. Right now, my insurance plan pays all but the deductible. So I'm paying four hundred I'm paying a hundred dollars the insurance plan pays four hundred. Okay, it's a preferred provider, so actually they're paying five hundred. But when I turn sixty five, my insurance plan is gonna say, well you know Medicare would only pay three hundred. We're only gonna pay three hundred, you're stuck with the two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. But if I had Medicare Part B, then everything Medicare Part B would be three hundred, my federal employee health insurance plan will pay the remaining two hundred. If you make above 170, you have to pay 150 or 146.90, whatever it is, which one more people get. And you have an out-of-pocket uh, catastrophic in your plan of, right. uh, say, 4,000 to 4,500. Uh, you're talking about 3,600 a year for two people. Once they get there, you're really looking at a difference of 500 or so dollars of the. And the, and the inconvenience. But here's the deal. Mm -hmm. You're telling me it's age 65, right? Mm -hmm. Are you going to promise me the same thing at age 85, 95? Because you don't have to sign up for Part B when you're 65. You could sign up later, but guess what? If you don't sign up when you're 65 and you're retired, for every year you wait, you can add 10% per year you wait. You wait till age 70 to sign up for Medicare Part B, you can tack on 50% to those monthly premiums. It's a permanent penalty. You, they really force you to sign up at 65. The only exception is if you're still working at 65 and you have your insurance with your employer, like here, right? You don't have to sign up for Part B until you retire. And there's no penalty. There's no penalty. I, I know it's excruciating. But trust me, we have no right to complain. I'm not complaining. I'll pay the, I'll pay the Medicare Part B premium. I don't want to take the chance that if I don't sign up, I'm going to regret it later on and pay more because I wait. It's worth it. Again, if you're over 65 don't, and you're still working, you don't have to sign for Part B. Sign for Part A and hold off on Part B until you retire. Eight months after you retire, sign up for Part B if there's no penalty. I'll take, I'll take up to eight months, right? Up to eight months following your retirement. I'll take, uh, Matt, one more. Yeah, that's fine. My George. If you're yes, married and filed jointly, so each spouse would be paying 104 90 but if only one spouse is covered or, or signed up for Medicare Part B, then you, you still, one person would pay 104 Point yeah, it's only you were talking about both vassals, if each would pay for 65. Now, here's the suggestion. 
If both of you are over 65 and you're both enrolled in Medicaid, and let's say you're in a high option health insurance plan, Blue Cross Blue Shield high option, my opinion, get out of Blue Cross Blue Shield high option and go into Blue Cross Blue Shield low option because it's cheaper. Once you, if you're single, or you and your spouse are over 65, you don't need the most expensive federal employee health insurance plan because Medicare is still going to be the primary payer. Only if you're only if you're worried about paying the expenses for you and your retired spouse, right? But not for your children under 26. Right. If you have kids under the age of 26, then you're going to have to stay in a right. standard or a high option. Uh, by the time I'm 65, our old our younger daughter will be. She'll turn 26. I'm going to get out, but my wife will be 62. So I can't get out of the, the option. Um, I have I have standard. I have GHA, G H A standard. Mm -hmm. I have to I have to wait till she turns 65 to get into basic. Because all right, well, in that situation, you're 65. Your wife is 62. Yeah. All right. Uh, you. Uh, both. Well, never mind. I don't want to keep everyone here. It's fine. That's all. Okay. All right. You know, obviously, I did get through everything. You can get the rest of the information here. We skipped over. Let me just say real quick here. Um, here's that earnings test. This is for this year. Um, for those of you who are in the full retirement age, that 62 to the year you turn full retirement age. There's another earnings test for people when they turn the year they turn full retirement age. Like for example. Uh, this year, people turning 66 this year. Up until the month they turn full retirement age, they can earn $40,080. So it's up to the month they turn full retirement age. If they're working and they earn above $40,080 for every $3 to go rate over here, Social Security takes back $1 of their benefits. And by the way, the earnings test only applies to salary, wages, or supplement income. The earnings test does not apply to interest, dividend income, pension income, um, capital gains, um, rental income. It's strictly on earned income. I call it the sweat income. There are some other taxes out there, new taxes. I don't know if you heard about the Medicare surtax of 3.8% that applies to net investment income for people whose income, single people over 200000 Married people over two hundred and fifty thousand dollars of right. AGI are subject to an additional tax of three point eight percent. You can thank the Affordable Care Act for that. One, okay, um, so that was on that. And then finally here, um, we went to that um, survivor benefit. Um, talked about um, survivor benefits, applying Social Security. I have a little bit of here about about Medicare. We touched on. I wish I had more time, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very so much for having me today. It's been a great afternoon. Look forward to coming back and talk about other things. TSP, you know. Um, so again, TSP, CSRS first, benefits, we do it all. So thanks again for having me. Wish you all the best. If you have any leftover questions, please, I get those two websites, federalsoup.com or myfederalretirement.com. Um, I know a lot of you read myfederalretirement.com. Article is going to come out tomorrow on the best states to retire to from the, from the standpoint of inheritance, uh, death taxes, inheritance in the state state taxes. Like, you know, I have a whole list of states, the good states to retire to when it comes to taxes. This, in this case here, death taxes. Okay, Virginia is good. Okay, DC and Maryland. Maryland. I have one that probably doesn't apply to any but many other people, but I have a. a I'm allowed a, a, a Social Security pension from an EU country. Mm -hmm. uh, where did I sign up? Oh, uh, you can contact Social Security. They would let me know yeah. whether I get both or not. Yeah, they'll, they'll contact your authorities. Okay. Okay. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, can I come back in four years? Can I come back in four years?